Are we live? Are we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue with some space exploration. Although, actually, I'm in the sandbox at the moment. Uh, I was doing a few experiments with uh, making a ship with the Nexus. Turns out uh, the Nexus uses more power the faster you go. Um, and that is at 100 speed it uses 1 gigawatt of power continuously. So if we want uh, our end game ship where we need to go, uh, let's see, we need to go 250 uh, units minimum for 10 minutes con uh, consecutively. Uh, that's going to make it a little bit tough because that is 2.5 gigawatts for the Nexus alone, which means we need about well, let's just call it 3 gigawatts, because these things give us 1 gigawatt each. Not counting um, the power that we get from having to recycle the 500 degree steam that comes out as well. Um, so... It becomes a little bit of a tyranny of the rocket equation kind of thing where we need to add more stuff because we need to add more stuff. Um, very, very difficult or not really possible, depending on where your scale is, to keep this thing relatively small. Um, we don't need an endgame ship just yet, obviously, um, but it would have been pretty cool if we could design one just to get um, our interstellar uh, travel data. Uh, but this thing I sort of threw together somewhat. Um, I actually did end up going with a beam receiver tentatively because if we want to use antimatter reactors um, so we're, we're going to say we need 3 gigawatts, or we need 2.5 plus change, uh, a significant amount of change, but it is just sort of a rounding error compared to the cost of the Nexus. Um, a, re a single antimatter reactor only gives us 400 megawatts. That's actually not even enough to support a single high temp uh, heat exchanger. And we would need, um, let's see, uh, let's call it 3,000 steam per second uh, to be safe. We would need at least five. Um, this actually is five. Judging from how this thing performed, I would say we need at least uh, six or seven uh, high temp heat exchangers. To keep up with it. So that's uh, 560 megawatts. Let's be really conservative and really like lo hopeful and say that 5 would be enough. That would be 2.8 gigawatts coming out of here. Uh, uh, that would be 7 of these if they didn't get neighbor bonuses. If they do get uh, neighbor bonuses, let's say we do a 2x2. Two um, it'll be plus 100% for each neighbor, so this is going to get triple, uh, so we're going to get uh, 1.2 gigawatts times 4, wait, is that right? Yeah, I think so. 1.2 gigawatts times 4, so that's going to be enough power. Uh, any other shape doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but actually fitting the high temp heat exchangers around it uh, is surprisingly problematic. Um, so we need what? Let's say six of these since we probably need that many and it'll be more symmetrical as well. 
Um, if we put these as close together as possible, these ones just simply can't be resupplied, except manually. Um, if we put this up here, only this one... Well, I guess we could... I guess we could... Use some long arms. Perhaps. And then we would need pipe here. I think I remember hitting on this and realizing there was a problem, though. Uh, this does connect to a bit of heat pipe, right? Yes. So this is resupplied, this is resupplied. We can resupply these ones up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, here we are. <laughs> Here's the problem with this layout. We can't get water in and out of these two. The shape of these uh, giant heat exchangers is actually slightly inconvenient. So therefore... Uh, this needs to go up at least to here, unless we had heat pipe there, which would probably kind of make things worse. Um, if we do this, we can... Oh wait, no, we can't put this here. Um, if we do this, we can't resupply this reactor. If we do this... That is going to be blocked, and the water would have to go all the way around here. Um, I guess you could even do something like this, and then you'd have to have steam pipe all the way up here. Something like that. I guess you could have... a pretty convenient spot for water storage anyway. Kind of. Not exactly. Um... And of course, like so. And then you've got all of your steam bottlenecking. What do we got? 560, 1000 and something. Might even end up needing a pump about here and keeping this going directly somewhere else. Um, so taking all of that into consideration, uh, the size of a energy beam receiver is actually surprisingly small by comparison. Although we are going to be using much more energy than we normally do for a ship, so we're going to have to make sure we wait until it's fully recharged and not send it too far. Um, but this design right here might do just fine um, for just getting ourselves some interstellar travel data. Uh, I was thinking we could move all of this stuff at the front up one tile and then we could have some more uh, heat exchanges, but we're actually bottlenecked on... we're not consuming the 5000 degree steam as fast as we're making it already, um, because the challenge is to keep water out of the way and consume the 500 degree steam. Uh, if we're consuming, what is it, 1.7 gigawatts plus change, let's call it 2 gigawatts just to be pessimistic. Um, if, we're, if we're going through like 2 gigawatts here, uh, we would need 214, about 428, uh, we would need about 5.3 of these condenser turbines, but from sending this thing on a test run, let's go to Angulus. From sending this thing on a test run, um, it didn't work out 
to that kind of math. The evil plot. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So, uh, we also have to keep this not as full of fluid as we would normally like uh, in order to keep the water output flowing at a decent rate. Um, but yeah, we do immediately bottleneck on outputting 500 degrees steam. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that is. But here you can see the power consumption of the Nexus uh, creeping up uh, directly proportional with our speed. Uh, it's at 1.2 gigawatts now. Um, I do have a bit of speed control here. We're just sort of aiming for 200 if the if these two accumulators are full, and if we if if they drop, our target speed slows down, which it's doing right now actually. Uh, we can see that here 108. Why is our target speed 108? Um, I could have sworn I tested this and had had it settle at around top speed uh, for this ship. And then when a big asteroid would hit the shields, there would be a little bump. Um, but yeah, I could maybe consider building this just to get our interstellar travel data. Oh, we're not even in interstellar space just yet. I think. Yeah. So the Nexus... The Nexus is going to consume a ton of power and do nothing until we're out of the solar system. Maybe it would be worth power switching this. We've already consumed like 12 degrees Celsius on the energy beam receipt. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, that was with the infinity heat pipe left connected. Yeah, we're consuming a lot of power to do nothing right here. So we're either going to consume a ton of heat before we even get any interstellar travel data, or if I use antimatter reactors, we're going to waste a ton of antimatter canisters, um, or at least a ton more than we should, um, just to get into interstellar space. How can we detect when we're in interstellar space, though? Uh, that's actually a really good question. Um, let's see. I see star 502. Is that Calidus? No, that's our destination. I believe. Angulus. Yeah, star 502. Um, if we click on this, it tells us that closest location is Calidus Asteroid Belt. Um, or if we, if we click on it here, we can see this information. But I don't know if we can get something from circuit conditions. Uh, that'll tell us if we're in interstellar space. The distance signal indicates the distance to the selected destination. I guess we could set up a specific route, and if destination is X and distance is less than Y, we could uh, or we could, yeah, we could literally just say if distance to target destination is less than Y. Well, no, because 
when it comes back into Calidus, it's going to still be trying to run the Nexus here. But if we don't do it that way, if, if we do the first version where it's both destination and distance, um, we're just not going to get interstellar data on the return trip, and that's kind of a waste of half of the fuel. Well, not half, because this will be spending way more energy. Half of the fuel, if we're using a beam receiver, if we're using antimatter uh, canisters, then this thing is going to consume the vast majority uh, of our energy, regardless. Um, but yeah, this is... What, once we get it going, we can get interstellar travel data at a okay pace, I suppose. It's not exactly, um, you know, high SPM, but it works. So we could... Um... Another thing we could do, I, I don't want to do this actually, is we could just l l greatly reduce our speed until we leave the solar system. That way... You know what? Yeah, I just realized we could detect if we're in the solar system, if we have a solar panel and some... Uh, add-on power poles and an accumulator that's on its own little power network which would be a big nuisance because we can't use like pylon substations um, but if we did do that we could detect when we're outside of the solar system based on when that accumulator charge drains we would also need something to consume uh, that accumulator as well so it could maybe just be attached to one of the laser turrets or something. Um, so now we're... Okay, this is something I don't understand. Um, I keep making symmetrical, or almost perfectly symmetrical, um, power plants. And we end up with stuff like this. Um, there's no water waiting for output on this side. But on this side, it's bottlenecked on water output. Which is a little bit annoying because uh, probably the biggest part of the challenge of building this thing, uh, trying to keep an end game ship or just a functional ship that does uh, interstellar travel data as small as possible um, is we're basically we're basically needing to build a, I mean it's kind of true of all spaceships more or less we're basically trying to build a very powerful but compact power plant and some stuff around it like this is the real nuisance right here, I would say. So, seeing stuff like this uh, is a little bit, a little bit annoying, especially when there's so much empty space in our water containers here. Um, yeah, like, really a lot of empty space. It's, it's just so imbalanced. I think I had some pumps here before and then came to the conclusion that they weren't needed. Uh, silly me, I guess. Why don't we try this? Oh, 
Oh, that's actually working. That actually worked a lot better than expected. Okay. Fluids are so thick in this game. Um, does that mean our speed is... Our speed is actually improving because of that, but... I don't know if this is just when I disconnected the water pipes. It probably is. But we need to see if the average goes up after this. Fluids are thick, indeed. Spadge's channel, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, let's speed this up a little bit. And... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's... that's definitely helping. Uh, in fact, it looks like... It looks like we're now gonna maintain top speed. Yeah, this is... I think this is what I had before. And then thought it, this part wasn't necessary. Um, this is probably going to maintain top speed, except for when big asteroids hit the shields. And then there should be a little bump, perhaps. Um, as the shields consume a ton of energy for just a moment. Uh, so yeah, this is 170 speed Nexus ship. Relatively small, I imagine, for a Nexus ship. Um, we are already... I was going to say we're already down 10% of our heat, but it's really like 20% because at 5,000 we're effectively at zero. Uh, so Angulus is probably as good a target as any, although really what we need is a solar system with a planet very, very, very close to the interstellar map so that we can spend as... yeah, like War is here, so that we can spend as little time as possible. Let's... I think we still have enough heat. Uh, let's go to Waris. Waris orbit. And we could maybe set up, um, we could maybe set up, like, a little orbital platform here, which is going to receive beamed power from the local sun, um, and just, basically just an anchor. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Morris Orbit. Uh, yeah, we could probably just have literally just an anchor here. Somewhere. Apparently we would need some scaffolding because this is the one orbit that doesn't have any... any stuff to connect to. Okay, this is getting spooky. Wait, do moons just not have, uh, like, space rocks orbiting them? What the... Uh... This is getting spookily improbable. Maybe it has to be a planet of a certain size. Orbit of Petusia. Yeah, there we go. I'm guessing it probably has to be a planet of a certain size for this stuff to be here. Um, but more to the point. Uh, yeah, we could go to, like, Warris Orbit. 
have a clamp here and just have the ship launch back to Nalvis automatically on a timer uh, to make sure we get our heat back. Or we could just make sure that the route is short enough um, that we don't get down to 7,500 heat before we turn around. Uh, fuel, on the other hand, is no problem at all with all of these tanks. We could probably, um, we could probably get rid of quite a few of these tanks. Um, that would give us less container stress. Not a whole lot less, because, like, fluid containers are pretty discounted compared to chests. But maybe we could get the whole stress down to, uh, the container stress down to like 2100 even. Only 170 speed and yet still looks very zoomy. I mean, it's relatively fast. Um, it's not end the game with a Nexus fast. Fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um... I can't but I can't have this one connected here unless we waste another whole vertical time. I'm a bit surprised that with 10 antimatter engines our top speed with close to the minimum container stress that we can come up with with this um our top speed is only 170 game over yet? Not yet. Alright, let's, um, let's remove some of these. Uh, I can't actually do it there. Wait, how was I going to do this? Good question, because both of these line up. So we have to have this pipe connect to the sides of one of these things. I could move these accumulators. Does this reach? Yeah, it looks kind of bad though. Oh, I could just have it go down here, obviously. Are my butts asleep? Oh, I don't have any. Okay. Wait, what? There we go. Um, two, three, four, five. And then, I'm guessing eight tank. Let's go for ten tanks, or maybe even like fourteen. Actually, if I remove this one, the pipe still has to come over this way. Let's just start with removing these ones and see what kind of uh, hull stress we get, actually. Okay, uh, integrity check, we're down to 2298, that didn't make that much of a difference, um, oh, we're here, okay, that looks kind of cool in its own way. Um, yeah, we only got container stress down to 22.23, although that will, that will not make a not insignificant, but well, it'll make a little bit of a difference to top speed. I am the sky. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
and thank you very much for the raid, Mikelat. How's your stream today? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good. Fantastic. Only 170 speed and still looks... Oh, yeah, yeah. Still looks very zoomy. Uh, also, Bilbo, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Veldak, good to see you again also. Alright, let's go back to Nalvis Orbit. And see what kind of new top speed we get out of this thing. Now that we've removed a bunch of containers. Uh, it was 170 point something. I'm sure we have the power to support a little bit more speed on the Nexus. Um... I do find it a little bit wild that our top speed is this low with 10 antimatter engines. But Nexus be very heavy. Also, the hull stress is almost as high now. 177? Daniel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, Raiders, indeed. 178. I think we're going to get to at least 180. Um, but yeah, the end game ship is going to be significantly bigger than this. Uh, it's a very tyranny of the rocket equation. You keep having to add stuff because you have to add stuff. Uh, so, this making trying to make the smallest possible end game ship. Uh, is going to be a very, very interesting challenge. Or, and or a very annoying challenge, because trying to, trying to miniaturize a really strong power plant uh, with high temp steam, that's pretty tricky. Ooh, maybe, okay, maybe this is heresy. But maybe the time for maybe the time for a steamship has come. No reactor, just pump in high temp steam. Fat ship, indeed. Do you have antimatter? Yes, I do. However, um, as I was trying to design this, uh, the Oh, I also just realized there's no room for input for this here, after all. Um, uh, the restrictions and limitations of getting enough power out of antimatter reactors and into high temp heat exchangers, the amount of space it actually takes up uh, to generate enough power for the Nexus uh, basically means Arguably, we may as well use a energy beam receiver. Dang, those are fast bots. Yeah, they're cheap bots. Um, speed is a very large number. And cargo capacity is a thousand. They pick up an entire stack of whatever you want in one go. They also um, don't require energy. Speed, yes, indeed. <laughs> Jerk me. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're already down to 7.7k heat. We're, we're almost down to half of our heat. So we would definitely have to go on a relatively short trip with this design, um, but that said, a relatively short trip still makes quite a lot of interstellar data. So I might go for this design. Um, not obviously we can't like just build on this a little bit to make the end game ship, um, but it seems to be functional for the sake of just getting interstellar travel data. Um, I could maybe 
find a better use for this space back here. Um, but first, uh, we need to activate cheats. Wait, no, it's not cheats. It's the editor I should go into. Uh, and then research. Energy, beam, damage. Uh, unresearch, nine. Uh, where's ten? Oh, I do have a research thing somewhere. Uh, ten... I think we haven't researched 10 yet in our game, but we could easily if we want to at this stage. I want to make absolutely sure we're not... Um, I mean, with considering we have the energy shields, I, I doubt it's going to make a very big difference with the energy shields behind the lasers. Um, but I want to make sure that we're not like testing this with more firepower than we actually have. Um, and our power. You can see the energy, uh, you can see the spikes. I don't know why the spike goes down and then back up above the line. Uh, probably the Nexus consuming power doesn't react instantly. And then there's a little bit more available. I don't know. No, that doesn't quite make sense. Uh, but yeah, these spikes happen when we hit... Oh, we're actually at 1.8. Yeah, 180 speed. That was a significant... That was a surprisingly significant improvement. No, wait, I forgot. We were at 170 before, not 160. Um, yeah, so we can't actually perfectly maintain 180... Uh, speed here. When a big rock hits the shields, uh, it consumes a bunch of energy, and we slow the. We don't actually slow down because the accumulator charge drops enough to change the, uh, to drop the speed signal below one uh one seventy. Uh, one eighty rather. It's actually because the engines get deprioritized compared to the shields. Even though we've got... How many accumulators would we need to be able to eat that uh, that bump in power consumption? Where's our highest spike? Hmm. It's really hard to tell with these tiny little... Okay, we go from like... Uh, we go... Okay, 3.2 gigawatts up there. Yeah, we can see the top up here. So we went from 1.8 to 3.2 just for a moment. So we need about 1.8 gigawatts of max output from the Naquium accumulators, and they only do 25 megawatts each. Um, we would need 72 <laughs> Naquium accumulators um, to be able to eat that spike, like the, the biggest one of these spikes that, that we've seen when the energy shield eats something. Uh, we would need like 72 Naquium accumulators in order to not lose speed for just a tick. I don't think that is quite worth the investment. Uh, we've got 10 already. Can we even fit that many back here? I don't think so. Uh, so this is half of what we need, 38. Uh, our hull stress should still be below container stress. So these are basically free as far as the design goes. Um, we can fit some more here. We don't really need these solar panels. Uh, so I'm curious as to how much smoother this is going to get. 
okay. I am a little bit pleasantly surprised. I did expect that my estimation of how many accumulators that we would need could be off, but that has actually completely smoothed out our curve here. Well, not curve, but our, our, our line of power consumption from the Nexus, which is actually a perfectly good indicator of our speed. Why not add accumulators that are only for the engines? Or is that not possible? That... Hmm. That's an interesting thought. We would need the accumulators to be able to receive power from this, but only give power to this. I don't know how we would do that. It is an interesting idea, though. We would have to... Um, we would need, like power switches, and I think it's easier just to have some more accumulators in this case. But yeah, that, that could work. So, just how many accumulators do we need to keep this perfectly smooth, I wonder? Let's start removing them. Except, and then we have to wait till we run into a giant asteroid or two. So let's speed it up. Uh, that is still looking smooth. One more. Seems good. Should probably look for... Yeah, there we go. There's a giant asteroid. One more. Oh, we're here. Well, that doesn't help our testing. Uh, let's put this infinity heat pipe back. Looking at how quickly that Oh wait, we're um we're sped up, I forgot. Also we should get a feel for how much fuel this is. We could still speed it up a little bit by removing uh antimatter containers. I feel like six is getting a bit reckless, but if we're specifically designing this ship to make short ish trips back and forth uh and we're using a beam receiver and we and we have to limit our uh, how far we go then maybe this is fine actually yeah that's really close um let's do some threes Alright, this, I feel like this is flying a bit close to the sun. Only 200k antimatter stream for a ship that uses five, uh, 10 engines. That's actually only 20 per second, so... Uh, 10,000 seconds? Or 166 minutes? Or 2.78 hours? Does it really have that much time to run at full speed with just this? Okay, that actually might be plenty then. Um, and our container stress is just above our hull stress now. That's pretty good. Alright, uh, we've got heat, we've got fuel, we've got water, of course. Let's continue testing. 
Uh, we'll aim for Sargus. Okay. We'll need to wait for this to get up to speed, which isn't taking too long at triple game speed. And maybe it would be easier if we just remove a bunch of accumulators and add them until we stop getting these little bumps. Bump, bump, bump. They're getting smaller and less frequent. Uh, it looks like that's all it takes. Although there might be an exception of like two large asteroids hitting at the same time. Uh, oh, there we go. There's our exception. Um, I would like to put in the minimum Holmium, uh, sorry, Naquim accumulators to get absolutely no uh, bumps here. We're still getting some small ones. Some very small ones. Maybe I should leave it at that. We still have room for more solar panels, but... There's not really a whole lot of point. The, the point of the solar panels is so that our consumption of fuel uh, for the reactor, basically, heat and water, is zero when we're just sitting around uh, in the solar system. Doesn't make any impact whatsoever once we're out and about. Uh, but yeah, that's looking pretty good. So this is a 184, actually. Oh, and we need to see how it goes for fuel. Fuel consumption check, yes indeed. Uh, so we're at 46k. And we're already halfway to Sargus. Um, we've consumed... Oh, crap. Okay, we're going back to Nalvis. Um, because I want to compare how quickly we consume our heat um, compared to how quickly we consume our fuel. Kind of like we're balancing bottlenecks, we're balancing hull stress and container stress. Um, it's kind of a waste if we have... Uh, well, I, I still would rather keep these few containers here. I, I don't think I want to go down to two. Partly because it just looks better as well, but also it's not... removing these two is not going to have a huge impact on our top speed. Um, but yeah, we we kind of want our heat, water, and antimatter stream to be consumed at about the same rate uh, so that we're not wasting storage capacity um, and we, we're not wasting container stress. Uh, are we there yet? Six minutes. Uh, six minutes game time. We're doing more than triple that. I guess 
instead of going back to Narvas, I could just cheat both fuel and heat. But we're trying to measure... Uh, we're trying to measure how far we can go, and, and Narvas is like a good spot to start from. I could put a timer on the ship so that... Hmm. I could put a timer on the ship so that X ticks after launch. It allows the Nexus to power up. Um, I could control the input inserter, but I'm sure we're just going to end up with some blank data cards in here waiting to be used with the recipe not moving uh, when we're sitting idle. Hmm. Yeah, it kind of sucks that we waste a bunch of power while we're still in the solar system. But if we're just receiving it as heat from energy beam transmitters, then I'm not overly concerned about that. Okay. Um, so we've got our fuel. Well, it is being pumped in ever more slowly. Yeah, there we go. It's saying 50k. It's not actually 50k, but... It's pretty close. Uh, we've got our fuel, we've got our heat, we've got our water. And we do not have any cheat heat pipe or cheat uh, infinity pipes connected in the ship right now. Alright, cool. Let's aim for... Sarkis. We could maybe go as far as er Arioni? What's the distance to Arioni? Uh, 61k. Alright, let's see if this thing can do a round trip at a distance of 61k. Are the double shields on the side necessary? Maybe not, but the power consumption from them is pretty irrelevant compared to the Nexus. So I'd rather be, uh, I'd rather just use the space and be safe. Um, if we look at the power graph, like, everything else is way, way, way down here. This is how much power the Nexus is using. Uh, and that spike of red there is, or spike of orange now, um, that's our shield power consumption. Um, and it really only uses a lot of power, like, the noticeable bumps in the shield power consumption is when it actually catches a big rock and recharges very, very quickly. Oh, look at that, this one just caught one. I don't know if it would have hit the back engine here, but I am comforted to have it there. In fact, we could put some shields here as well, if we want to be extra super careful. It really wouldn't make that much of a difference to the impact. I don't like putting it where I had my doors, but what can you do? Um, alright, so we are 12 minutes away from our destination. Uh, we're what, 30% of the way on the first half of the trip, and we've only used 3k from each tank. Uh, and we've used like almost a 
fifth. We're, we're approaching... Yeah, we're creeping towards using one-fifth of our heat here. Um, so I think I estimated that pretty well, actually. Uh, yeah, we've definitely got way more antimatter stream than we need compared to heat. Uh, and we're not going to run out of water before we run out of heat. Maybe I could reduce the number of storage tanks. Um, we would get slightly more speed. More speed means more energy consumption, means we run out of heat faster anyway, though. So we might even, if I remove, weirdly enough, if I removed a couple of these storage tanks, uh, it might push our, uh, it might push us over the line to not quite get to Arione and back. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure we could definitely just have a couple of antimatter stream tanks here, now that I look at it. So we've consumed 1500 degrees out of 5000. If we get down to 5000, this will stop producing steam. And we've only consumed 10% of our antimatter booster tanks. We've consumed way more than 20% of our heat, so yes, uh, we can remove two of these booster tanks here. Um, like this. I probably shouldn't have done that while we're in flight. It's fine. Two hundred UPS well. Yeah, we're doing uh we're running the game extra fast in a save that doesn't have a whole lot of stuff going on. Maholic, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh we can fit two accumulators here, but then... How much closer did we get? That's actually incredibly close with the container stress to hull stress. I kind of wish there was something 3x3. Three three. Well, I guess this is 3x4, actually. That would be good to use in a spaceship. Alright, so we're at our destination, we've got a little bit more than half our heat left, uh, and we've got way more than half. I mean, we removed two of our tanks halfway through, but we did the math. Um, even with just two tanks, we've got a lot more antimatter stream than heat. Um, let's see also how many data cards... I want to see how many data cards we get um, on half of this journey. So our destination is again 61,000 distance away. Maybe it would be worth... Hmm... Maybe it would be worth, instead of having this thing come all the way back to Nalvis orbit itself, we could even uh, have, like, a little outpost. Uh, I guess it would be Calidus Asteroid Belt 2. This would be where the ship comes back, uh, and we have a little outpost just to resupply it. Just so that it doesn't spend all this time flying uh, in the solar system, 
using up a bunch of power and not generating data cards. But I don't think it's really worth the effort, especially considering that we're using uh, just heat. If, if I was using... Um, uh, if I was using antimatter canisters to fuel the power here, I would seriously consider it. But that's something we could do. Have it so that it spends the minimum amount of time in the solar system at both ends. Uh, but yeah, we're actually... how much data are we likely to get? Looks like at least 500, at least a thousand for a round trip. That seems good. Yeah, I think this will do. Um, we probably don't need... Do we need this many accumulators? I think we probably kind of do. Yeah, we do get a few little dips. Uh... Okay. Oh, these ones are still charging. That's fine. So we're about halfway back, and we've got 300. So we're looking at about 1,200 per round trip, if we can find a good destination. Seems okay. I don't know where I'm... I don't know in which direction I'm going to go design-wise to try and get a Nexus ship for the end game. Um, we're obviously going to have to go wider because this is about as small as a Nexus ship can be. Um, container stress wise and this is as narrow as a ship can be to have this many antimatter engines so we're definitely going to need more uh, considering our speed is at 185 now we'd probably need at least uh, four to eight more engines. Uh, if we continue this pattern up here, it's going to be a oddly shaped ship. Maybe just this ship, but even bigger. Um, or maybe we could do a giant uh, triangle. Or maybe we could do a bit of both. Like, what if we... What if we had the engines sort of zigzag like this? Uh, then we wouldn't get fuel in here. So it would have to be one tile back like that. And we could have them do a zigzag thing so that um, they'd be just as far apart horizontally, but instead of going up like this, uh, they would basically be in a straight line across like this. And then... So we can... We can take an educated guess that the ship is going to be maybe about this wide? Or more? Uh, we've got some tyranny of the rocket equation kind of stuff to factor into that, so it might... It might get significantly bigger before we can maintain 250. Um, we should definitely try to keep the... I think the hull stress might actually go beyond the container stress. We did add a whole lot of accumulators. 
Oh, uh, I didn't actually see the final count of interstellar travel data, but yeah, uh, we can estimate maybe 1,200 uh, interstellar, interstellar travel data cards from one trip. I think that, I think that's going to cut it. I think that's pretty good. Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so yeah, I think this will be our... Uh, not our endgame ship, obviously, but our regular Nexus ship. Let's remove the scaffolding and this stuff. And any cheat things. I think there aren't any. I did not watch your stream for some time. How much research is open? Uh, we're actually getting pretty close to the end. We're in sandbox at the moment, so I can't show you just yet, but we're just about to get back to the regular game. I think we've got something like six, uh, researchers that are still in the red. Uh, and if I recall correctly, actually this, uh, uh, interstellar travel data, which is what this ship is for, is actually the absolute last data card that we need to make. Um, but, uh, I'm just gonna have that as the icon. It's got a ship, it's got a spaceship on it, even. We really don't need that many flat solar panels. Well, then again, it will mitigate the wasted power while we're in the solar system. We could even put a couple more up there. SP Joe, aka Geek, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so, what was our top speed? I think it was like 185. Uh, 185. Nexus. Small Nexus ship. Okay. This is about as small as we can get. Uh, if we're putting a Nexus on a ship. I mean, the whole stress is about the same as the container stress. And we've got the absolute minimum of storage for fuel and stuff. Also, uh, one of the advantages of an energy beam receiver is we don't need a pair of chests for each antimatter reactor. That would be eight chests. Um, let me just put this in here first. If we added eight chests to this, we go from 21, 23 uh, container stress. to 2315, that is a significant bump. And I'm pretty sure this thing represents zero container stress. Even though it stores a ton of... Oh! Wait, no, we just went back to... Yeah, I forgot about... 2123. Yeah, this thing it, uh, literally counts as zero container stress, but we store a ton of energy in it. Okay, uh, let's get back to our regular game then. And that is going to take a minute. So I'm going to take a short break. We're going to throw on some words on stream. Oh no. Oh no, I lost all my tabs. Oh, tragedy. Uh, words on stream.
And I just have to put this here. Control Shift T. Uh, no, it was because I, I opened a new window and then I closed the other set of tabs first um, yesterday. All right, so in about 30 seconds, we're going to start some words on stream. I'll be back in a few... Wait, what? Okay, that loaded faster than expected. Uh, I'm still going to take a little break here. Especially after promising words on stream. Restore session? Uh, well, no, the thing is that it, it thinks of the one tab that I had open in another window as the session. Um, alright, so in about 30 seconds, uh, it's in. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're going to start some words on stream. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck and have fun. Oh, whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Can I pause this? Uh, stop. There we go. Yeah, sorry, Bilbo, I jumped the gun. <laughs> We're starting in like five seconds.
Fantastic. Fantastic again. One more. One more. Jeez, triple fantastic. You guys are crushing it. Alright, let's uh, continue with that a bit later, shall we? And for now... Uh, I'm just trying to drain this antimatter stream out from when I tried to start designing this uh, without editor extensions. Don't want to waste it all. It's actually quite a significant amount of anti -meta stream. Uh, this is not connected. That would probably help. Three, four, five. And three. And go. It's actually... Oh, here we go. Most of those were moon-like. Moon-like? Okay. 
how fast are we emptying this? 500 per second and dropping. Uh, as long as we can move these and the antimatter fuel should be, yes, bumped into those containers. Why is this getting so slow? Oh, right. Uh, we can remove this one. And if we remove this one, we're going to lose some antimatter stream right now. Uh, what can we do while we're waiting on that? Let's see how our Nequium... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, that's the last thing I expected, actually. Uh, we've got Naquitite. Enough that... Oh, the ship isn't taking off for lack of fuel, actually. Still. We did fix this already, but it's going to take some time. Um, but we don't have any Naquitite coming in until we fix the antimatter issue. Okay. Uh, how is the antimatter issue? We're still struggling to keep up with supercooled thermofluid. Um, it seems like we've got... Yeah, we've got tons of particle stream. That's never the problem. Alright, can we bump the priority up on this? I think we definitely should. Priority... Priority is yes. Uh, for negative 273 degree thermofluid here. If antimatter stops, everything stops at this point. It's slow because this is literally 10% of the speed of your test? Wait, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what was I talking about, though? What was slow? Oh, emptying the antimatter fluid. That's going to take time anyway, because of how viscous uh, fluids are in this game. We're close to being able to get rid of this tank without wasting any. Uh, this is not full yet. That's good. Should probably just fill that up with tanks over there. That might actually speed this up a little bit. Because more empty means it pumps faster. Yeah, emptying went from 200 UPS back to 21. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, are we just about ready? We are. We've got 15k cold thermofluid. Uh, this is supposed to be cold. This is. Uh, this is cold. And this is not supposed to be cold. This is supposed to be cool. So. Also, this isn't supposed to be cold. So, how do I separate them? Uh, let's grab our spider. I'll go over there personally. Actually, before I do... Uh, we can wait a little bit longer on that one. I can actually do that one remotely. Uh, we want to... How much cold is there? 15k. That is not trivial. I don't want to waste it. Um, well, we can definitely delete this 18 cold thermofluid right here. Uh, none of this should be cold thermofluid. Is 
This should be called thermofluid. Where did I connect them? Uh, I think this is it right here. So 14k on that side. 14k on this side. It's apparently still the same fluid network. Oh, that mod for visualizing fluid pipes would be good right now. Um, well, this part's definitely not supposed to be called thermofluid. So... Fluid system contents, 14k, that is still connected. Oh, up here, right. Uh, this is actually supposed to be the cool thermofluid network. And we can see 87k in there. That the both of them are connected. I wish I'd made a point of marking exactly where I was connecting these that they aren't normally supposed to be. This would appear to be it. But I disconnected those, and that's still not good enough. Um, let's spot the difference. Oh, there's some stuff up. I need to turn these pumps around as well. Actually, I should probably just remove these pumps until until we're ready. That'll simplify things a little bit. So cool thermofluid goes here and here and here here, and here, or here rather, and then it goes through, oh it's connected here as well, I think that's probably it, alright, there's still 6.9k cold thermofluid on this side, um, I think I'm just gonna have to get rid of it. And then these two should be the same, I think. I see the pumps haven't been turned around yet. I think that's it. Today, what happened? This was all new yesterday? Uh, yes. So, we were not keeping up with supercooled thermofluid uh, to make antimatter stream anymore, because we've got a lot of antimatter ships. Um, these inputs are fine. Yeah, yeah, it's just... it's just super cool thermofluid. Um, and we also needed to fix slash improve on our old uh, fluid block. So what we've got here is the complete package uh, for thermofluid. We start with just a short train bringing in crinite rods, uh, cosmic water, and heavy oil um, to make the initial thermofluid if necessary. Uh, we only put that in if this is pretty empty. Uh, less than 1k in this tank. We have drop-off stations here for 25 degree thermofluid. Uh, pumps it all over this way. Uh, here we have uh, 6,000 cold, uh, sorry, cool thermofluid per second. Pumps it very aggressively down this way. This is a drop-off for cool thermofluid only. We keep that empty, pump it down this way. 
This is the pickup for cool thermo fluid. Uh, and we also prioritize not bringing uh, the cool thermo fluid into here unless this is empty. Um, so if there's if we've got enough for a train to come for cool thermo fluid, we're not going to pump it in this way from here. Uh, maybe I should have... No. It would be simpler just to remove this. Um, I did. I do have this uh, this storage connected to all of this, but it's, it's at a pretty tight bottleneck. Um, all of this gets pumped into these machines pretty much directly. So, um, so there should be room to drop off cool thermo fluid. Uh, she wolf, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good morning to you as well. Um, so now we have uh, sixteen machines doing the Crynite slush versions of the uh, cryo cooling recipes. Well, that sounded a bit redundant, but yeah, the Crynite slush versions of the uh, cold and super cold thermo fluids. Uh, and we tested this very thoroughly in editor extensions. The theoretical max rate uh, that we can get from this is actually 2.9 thousand uh, super cold thermo fluid per second. Although in practice it'll be a bit slower than that while it's filling up on cold thermo fluid here as well. I just purchased Factorio, and I hope to learn something from watching you. Your factories look amazing. Wow, uh, thank you. Uh, I should let you know immediately that this is a mod that adds a lot, and I do mean a lot, excuse me, uh, to the base game. It actually probably makes it, it makes it about ten times bigger and more complicated than the base game. But you can still definitely pick up some fundamental stuff. Um, absolutely. Alright, there is our super cool thermo fluid. Fantastic. Uh, it could only be going to drop off to make antimatter stream because I just set the priority on that super high. Um, I am a little bit concerned though. Despite our excessive testing um, I'm not seeing the kind of throughput that I would expect we've got tons of thermo fluid it's not like we have an electricity shortage uh, I guess the testing that we did sort of assumes saturation of all of the previous fluids. So since we don't have lots and lots of cold or lots and lots of co uh, cool thermo fluid, we're not getting this at the maximum speed. I saw the mod community and there are a lot of great looking mods. I did did install some mods. Oh yeah, there's some great mods. Uh, there's definitely some quality of life mods that I would consider kind of What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, mandatory. Um, why? Oh, wait, what? Why is our 25 degree thermo fluid so... Oh. Oh. Maybe... Hmm. I could I could actually get a ton of uh, super cool thermo fluid really quick if I delete all of this twenty five degree th one point seven million. That is that would be a pretty big waste. Um, we're not outputting the warm thermo fluid fast enough to make all of this stuff at full speed. Uh, I did test this, but maybe I didn't test it for long enough because when this is sufficiently full. Um, 
we're not going to go as fast. Factorio takes over your life on its own, indeed. Shout me. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so... Input is definitely not an issue here. I'm thinking it might be better... In hindsight... If we do strictly... Only output the cold thermofluid... Um, to the station here when... Like, from... Uh, we only put the new cold thermofluid into here when this is low. Because we need to avoid all of the drop-off stations for cold thermofluid being too full. But isn't that kind of why... Oh, I know. Yeah, what if I add... What if I add a pump here? Maybe more than one, but... Maybe if I add a pump here and say... Uh, if cold thermofluid is greater... Than 100k? Or I could add a little bit of... Wiggle room there. Not 12k. 100k. So we want to keep this at between 100 and 120k, which isn't going to happen realistically, but um, the more fluid is here, the more trains can come to pick it up, although there's not as much demand for negative 10 degree thermofluid. Uh, that, that should be, that should be a three pipe. What the? All right. And then over here as well. So we're basically trying to keep this full enough for a train and empty enough to take what's in here. Um, and this, this side we're going to try to keep saturated all the time. But yeah, it's not input that's the problem right now. It's outputting the 25 degree thermofluid. Can you pump it in if there's thermofluid in reserve? Uh, yes, yeah, that's what we're doing. So this is available for the rail network, um, but we don't... We, we want it to be empty enough to take the dropped off cool thermofluid as well. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure what to do, though, about the 25 degree thermofluid. We've already got lots of pumps. Uh, we've tested that we can output all of the 25 degree thermofluid from here really fast up this way. But the more full the containers get, uh, the slower the pumps get. And also you can see it's much more full down here than it is up here. Also, is it my imagination, or did the color of 25 degree thermofluid get a little bit more pink than purple? Uh, I don't recall updating the game, so that's kind of weird. But yeah, there's significantly less thermofluid up here than there is down here. Um, probably not helping is the fact that I've, like, defuncted these old ones and they actually had a ton of 25 degree thermofluid storage as well. So, uh, it might be a good idea, actually. Oh, I forgot I left you all the way over there. Let's have them swing by the mall real quick, just in case they need any resupply. And I'm actually going to make two more blocks of this thermofluid. Um, I would hope that just two of these blocks, throughput-wise, theoretically, is more than we ever need. Uh, but also, just having the sheer storage capacity um, for the thermofluid here is going to make a pretty big difference. I don't suppose we can... we cannot. That will... oh, that's 25 degree thermofluid. 
Yeah, we can we can put this here. This is fine. All right, that'll help as well. Uh, like this, and like this, and like this. Yeah, there's just too much thermo fluid to store right now. Um, also, I noticed... Oh, that's a problem. I noticed a train here was looking for something. Blue science packs. I haven't defined how much fits in a train here. What quality of life mods would you recommend? Honestly, none at first, then after a couple hundred hours, you'll see what bugs you and want to change in the game. Being aware of them doesn't hurt, though. Um, personally, I don't want to live without, uh, even distribution, which lets you hold down control, drag this across, I missed a chest there, but it'll put the exact same number of space transport belts, for example, in all of these chests. Uh, there's also, like, a shortcut key, control C will dump, uh, all kinds of stuff in your inventory into nearby machines. Uh, very cool. And I like to set it so that it balances out inventories as well. So if we end up with a situation where we've got way more way more belts in this chest over here, uh, we can just pick up a little bit of this, drag that across, and even distribution is going to balance them all out. Uh, there's also picker dollies, which lets you move most items around like this. Uh, very, very cool because it preserves uh, wire connections and combinator settings and stuff. Um, suffice to say, doing the equivalent of this without the mod uh, is a lot more of a headache. You'd need to copy-paste the combinator and then redo all the wires just to do this. You can also rotate it in a way that vanilla doesn't let you. Um, but yeah, the mods that we're using are pretty much just space exploration plus some quality of life stuff. Alright, so that should have sped up, at least temporarily, uh, the super cool thermo fluid production over here. And I think I just ran out of tanks. But we've got our construction spiders on the way. Uh, we have fixed this, so let's get back to building our ship. Well, we've, we've fixed the, the problem that I knew was there, and we discovered a new problem. Which is kind of the way it goes. Squeak through is a favorite? Yeah, squeak through is kind of built into space exploration. Uh, so that's why you can see me running over pipes and stuff like that. Um, I forgot to tell LTN how much super cool thermo fluid we've got here. Uh, luckily, there's always a demand for super cool thermo fluid. I know exactly where to send it. So we're going to add a temporary stop here, and then add a stop here. Empty cargo. And that is going to drop off all of this super cool thermo fluid at the antimatter stream production. How high a priority did I set here? I didn't. Okay, that's fine. Products finished. Zero. We're looking for blank data cards. Aquium cube. 
and Naquim Processor. I thought we had Naquim Processors, apparently we don't. Maybe I had them delivered to the mall at some point. We haven't made any for only seven minutes. Okay, so that's probably working. Uh, we're not getting any Naquitite until we get this antimatter stream down to Nalvis. Oh, the ship's left. That's good. I was about to launch it manually. Um, but yeah, now we've got antimatter stream available for pickup here. Uh, two of these is equivalent to a full train. Um, so it's going to take a little while to get that delivered to our ships. In fact, it actually takes four train loads of um, antimatter stream to completely fill one of these ships if it was empty. But they're not empty, so... As soon as we get a train or two to each of these stations, these ships will be in motion again. Hey, 3 Aru. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Frunnel. Uh, f yeah, Frunnel. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Squeak through is popular, but it does change the game mechanics. Lets you easily walk through forests. Oh yeah, and I think... I think Squeak Through lets the biters easily run through forests as well. In fact, I do remember back on Nalvis not being able to use the trees for cover as we normally would when we had to deal with the biters. Oh, there's a there's a wall I haven't removed still. I mean, I'm sure there's a few actually, but uh, where are our deconstructing spiders? Let's bring you down here, and get rid of this rail. Is that a wall? It is a wall. In fact, I should have done this to start with. No cliffs? Oh, some cliffs. There we go. And up here... It is possible to make a deconstruction planner that will ignore the cliffs as well as the trees, but there's like 50 kinds of tree that we would have to add to the blacklist for the deconstruction planner. Okay. Take your time, didn't use logic in my first game, and only a little in my second. It's a gradual learning curve. Oh, for sure. That's one of the nice things about Factorio. Um, uh, it's the kind of game that, where you learn very complex systems uh, little by little. So it's actually not difficult. I've often thought that uh, games... How much is this? 1634. Uh, we could almost delete this without wasting any... Yeah, we can. There we go. Uh, if you remove fluid pipes and containers, uh, it'll try to push all of it into the next container. So, uh, I'm trying to get rid of all of this without wasting any antimatter stream. 30 plus 21k, 29 plus 21k, 28 and 21. There we go. Thought you were making a 10 engine rocket? Uh, yeah, we are. This was, this was what I did uh, on stream yesterday before I jumped into editor extensions. Um, I'm just trying to remove these so that we can get started building that rocket without... Why are, why are there no spaceship floors here? 
uh, we can get started making that rocket without, uh, sorry, spaceship, without wasting any of our precious antimatter fuel. Um, we're looking for 3,000 spaceship floor. We've got 1.1k here. Do we just have too many trains waiting that time? Oh my goodness. That would be a yes. Uh, the demand that we're putting on this little station here has exceeded what it can really keep up with sometimes. Uh, Frith Rabbit? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Uh, 20 and 18. 16 and 36. Um, the faster I push this all over here, the faster it's going to pump as well. 20 and 28, okay, cool. Alright, how is our build looking? We haven't started it. That is the first step. Let's put this here. You could add some more pipes and pumps to wrap from the other side. Yeah, I suppose. We're almost done, though. Uh, it's a little hard to move around because we're placing signals, uh, rail signals right now. Once you get, once you reach a critical mass with uh, the rail network, you're going to see a pause every single time it places a rail signal. Apparently it's forcing every single train in the game to repath when it does this. Even on separate surfaces. And we've got uh, almost 2,000 LTN train stations at this point. So you can imagine how much work that is actually for the computer to do. And once more with feeling. The nice thing about building these blocks is, if we run out of modules, it doesn't matter. Since there's no productivity bonus, we don't have to worry about wasting resources. Here comes the Crynite Slush, nice and fast. That should be enough to get that done. Thirty-four K and fourteen. That's fine. Forty-two and f forty and fourteen. Yeah, it's speeding up now. Thirty-six and sixteen. Thirty-four and seventeen. Thirty. Thirty-two and eighteen. Okay, there we go. And one more. Oh, as soon as that's empty, we can build this thing without wasting anything. Uh, maybe I should go and manually pick up some spaceship floor, since we've got too many short trains coming for blank data cards right now. Maybe I should allow short trains to pick up... Wait, didn't I already do that? Blank data cards. Yeah, we do allow short trains to pick up blank data cards from here. 
Hmm. I could increase the pickup priority on this. Um, but because it's trying to keep it balanced as well, it's going to take like four times... If a long train has been here, it's going to take four times as long as it otherwise would to supply the next short train. Uh, it is good to see the copper flowing again, though. And do we have room here? We definitely have room here for the antimatter. Alright, cool. How is our antimatter doing down on the ground? Uh, it's getting there. I think we might almost have enough to fill this already. Uh, seeing that the bots are in motion, we can probably deduce that some ships have taken off already, actually. Yep. So this is actually significantly further along than I originally thought. Fantastic. Hi everyone, Hughes Mike, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Today I upgraded to SE.6 mid-game. Uh-oh. And now I have a few things to attend to, but it's all good. Okay. Good luck. I'm gonna go manually pick up some of this uh, spaceship floor. In fact, I've got a bunch of stuff to drop off as well. Then again, I don't necessarily... Uh, it's fine. Um, am I requesting spaceship floor? E no. Alright, so we'll start with that. Morning, how goes the Nexus ship? Uh, yes and no. Uh, in our actual game, we are back to square one, building the Nexus ship. Uh, but I designed it in editor extensions. Um, so this is it. Uh, it goes 180 something. I think it's 185 uh, speed. Which costs us 1.85 gigawatts of power for the Nexus. Alex Indarius, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I went with energy beaming still because looking at how much power we need and the layout for uh, antimatter reactors. They're actually surprisingly weak, um, considering how high-tech they are and everything. I mean, they get us to 5,000 degrees steam, and that's great, but 400 megawatts, uh, if we don't have neighbor bonus, so if we have two neighbors, that is triple, uh, plus 100%, plus 100%, that'll give us 120 megawatts per antimatter reactor. We need, uh, more than two... If we're going to go for an endgame ship, um, we need to maintain 250 speed. Which means the Nexus is going to consume 2.5 gigawatts. Uh, which means we need to support... Uh, also, C. Moogle, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we need to support three... High temp turbine generators. Uh, I kind of went for four on this design, mostly for the sake of uh, symmetry, but also uh, also we can't count on these being able to go full tilt necessarily. Uh, we obviously can't put them together like this because they need to have their water output on the sides. Um, but yeah. Uh, we need, let's see, 2.5 gigawatts plus a little bit more. Let's call it 2.6 because the defenses and the engines are actually almost negligible compared to the cost of the Nexus. 
Uh, so let's say let's say we need two point six gigawatts. These can do one gigawatt each. Um, we need about. Well, let's say let's call it one thousand steam per second, and we'll say we need like two point eight times uh, one of these. So. Uh, 2.8 thousand steam per second. That is... What? 562. Uh, we would need 5. Uh, 5 high temp heat exchangers. So we can easily go like 1, 2. If we go 3, 4, we can't fit the water into the sides here. Uh, if we go like three, four, five, six, we can't fit uh, the input output chests for the fuel. Uh, I guess we could go like something like this. And the amount of space that we're already taking up with this, um, it's actually bigger than the energy beam receiver. So we'll certainly use uh, antimatter reactors for the endgame ship. Nice cruiser, thank you. Um, I think we're just gonna... I keep going to do this, but I don't want to remove the spaceship floor tiles. Alright, I should have the spaceship floor in my inventory. Let's head back over this way. And as soon as I'm out of this network, change that back to zero. And... Yeah, and then we also need to get all of this steam delivered to here. Uh, if we need, like, about 2.7, 2.8 of these, so 215, uh, this is 500 degree steam, 215 times 2.8, 602, uh, we would need 8 condenser turbines. Um, just to recycle the 500 degree steam. Uh, and we need to keep all of that fluid pumping around fast enough. A hey, Akira, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, Daniel, good to see you again. Also, welcome, welcome. Alright, so we've finally emptied this. Let's get rid of that for now. Doing okay. Who is you? Uh, yes. Yeah, no, I'm doing relatively well. Uh, let's just get rid of the scaffolding for now. Now, yes. And then grab our blueprint. And we're going to put it... Oh, I actually can't line it up with the uh, existing engines here either because... Uh, because of where the clamps are. Can we put it in the middle while we're at it? Actually, there's no reason. The water... Yeah, it doesn't really matter too much where we put it. May as well put it in the middle as much as we can. Just woke up. Fair enough. Uh, let's grab our deconstruction planner for... Actually, I'll wait till the walls are there. Actually, this part's really easy.
don't like this wire crossing where the beam receiver is going to be. Oh, where did the Nexus go? Oh, I've got it right here. Okay, cool. Uh, we still need more spaceship floor. Actually, is that going to... This is actually sticking out further than... Uh, further than our building range right now. Let's put a supercharger up here as well. Okay. What ship are you building? Uh, our first Nexus ship. Uh, so this won't be able to win the game for us, but it'll be able to give us interstellar travel data. Uh, that is this stuff right here. So it has to be in a moving ship that's in interstellar space, otherwise it doesn't work. And the faster you go, the faster it works, but also the more power it consumes. And it consumes quite a lot of power. Um, it also costs 2,000 hull stress. So it's not like we can just make a small ship for this. Um, yeah, if you're going 100 speed, uh, it actually consumes an entire gigawatt of power. And I'm pretty sure that just scales indefinitely. Holy moly, indeed. How do you win the game? Uh, one, uh, there's multiple victory conditions, I've heard, but one very clear victory condition that you can see in the research screen uh, is called Spaceship Victory. Uh, it unlocks this recipe for the Nexus, um, and the ingredients are actually the interstellar, interstellar travel data that we're about to be making. Um, you have to keep it above 250 speed for 10 minutes, so that's 2.5 gigawatts just for this. All while also supporting a ship that goes 250 speed and is significantly more than 2,000 container stress because the Nexus itself is 2,000 container stress. Uh, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge to design that ship. It's a bit of a tyranny of the rocket equation kind of thing, where you keep having to add more stuff because you keep having to add more stuff. That reminds me, I hope Double Space Program 2 will be good. Um, we really don't need this many Naquium flat solar panels, but it's not like I'm using them anything else. Alright, uh, integrity check. Oh, we're missing some Naquium accumulators. Do we actually have a few of those, or was I holding all of them? I was holding all of them. What does it, what does it cost? It's probably relatively cheap for what we've got now. Uh, one Naquium cube each. I can live with that. Let's make a few... What about the solar panels? Also one Naquium cube, wow. Uh, yeah, we can... We can at least make sure we've always got a handful of... Flat solar panel 3 and Naquium accumulators. Um, although it seems like... Oh, that is a lot. Uh, I'm just going to go steal those Naquim cubes. And we're going to put those into accumulators. Yeah, I forgot just how many cubes it takes to make um, antimatter reactors. We're only trying to make a handful of them, though. 
Uh, let's see. We're trying to make eight in this block, and then they get taken over here as well. We're looking for eight. Because we're going to make a... We've got eight. Oh, we don't have eight in here. Okay, I think... Uh, I think I'll stop requesting reactors be delivered here for now. Because we've got everything we need to make that power plant that we designed for Foenestra, where there's literally no um, solar power, and we can't really beam energy, and we need 10 gigawatts. Uh, to run the bloody thing. Oh, I went past it. Rocket Equation is always there to ruin my day, indeed. Uh, Sour Haggis, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we're already doing this. Oh, wait, no, we need to steal these. There we go. Wait. Oh, bad timing. Uh, here we go. Aquium accumulators are what I care about for the moment. And how many? Uh, 5, 10, 11. There we go. We got 11. We got exactly 11. Okay, never mind. We got a bit more than that. Also, th if I didn't say so, three Aru. Good to see you again. Oh, well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so how are our Naquium ingots looking? Very good. Very good. These two haven't activated just yet. Uh, Leech Leech, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, uh, so I probably should have started pumping in antimatter fuel by now. We only need uh, 100k to have way more... Oh, we need to start beaming heat here. That's going to take longer. Uh, it seems I've actually got... Oh yeah, this one's spare. This one is not spare anymore. Uh, I'm still going to borrow it. We're going to go energize. Now this orbit. And here. And we're not going to be launching until this reaches 10,000 degrees. Uh, it is going to happen pretty quickly though. We're getting like 20 every tick here. I don't understand the current fad for horror games. If you want true horror, play Factorio and try, try to keep feeding the needs of an ever-expanding factory. Uh, I guess. Uh, let's see, we're reading these two. That's fine for our target speed. Is this everything? Yeah, we just need water and heat. Uh, water, heat, and antimatter. So let's get our antimatter in here. Um, can we fit a pump? Not really. We can if we do this. Um, let's turn that around. Let's get rid of this pump, actually. I 
wonder if we could do better than four segments here. 15, 30, 1, 2. I don't think so. Uh, 18. And then... Wait, is that it? 18... And then 15. Nope, that's one off. Rip. It's fine. I'm sure this is going to pump fast enough to fill our two tanks in a decent amount of time. Uh, we also need water. So let's get started with that. Um, and we're going to pump it in here. I think this will be where we connect it. Oh, I could have changed the length of this. Yeah, we can, we can knock that down to two pipe segments. Uh, pump this away. And then go up here. Lazarus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And a nine, perhaps. Perfect. Or good enough, anyway. Alright, so here we need to connect to the spaceship clamp. So that we can read uh, this wire right here through the clamp. And we're only going to fill the water up to... About half, actually. Um, because there's a ton of water that gets put into the inputs of these things, or the outputs, rather. So we actually sort of have more water than it looks like. And we want to keep it sufficiently empty uh, so that we'll get a decent flow rate for the output fluids. I'm just waking up. How are you today? Yeah, not too bad. Okay. So that's our antimatter. That's our water. And that's our heat. I believe we are ready. Except for just waiting for it to fill up a bit more. And I'm not going to automate this just yet. We're still, even though we've tested it in editor extensions, we're still in sort of the test drive phase. Um, although I... What's our laser damage? It is 10. We could easily knock off another... Uh, another laser damage bonus. But I don't think it would make that much of a difference. Factory, spaceship, or... Oh, wait. No, we already got the prerequisite for victory. Uh, factory, uh, spaceship size-wise. Our next one we need is Deep Space Science Pack 4. And I wonder how much we've got lying around, actually. Uh, we have 908 pack 2s and 1.4k pack 1s. Uh, so we're literally just about to run out of pack 3s. How much does it take to do this? 2,000. Um, so we already have enough. This, this gets a more than 100% productivity bonus. So we've got more than enough of... 
Deep Space Science Pack 1. We may already have enough Deep Space Science Pack 2. Uh, it's just Deep Space Science Pack 3 that we're waiting on here. Which we have... 564. That's not going to get us to the end. Okay, that's going to be a little while then. This thing is warming up nice and fast, though. Uh, could this be connected over here, perhaps? Maybe this up a bit. There we go. And maybe this as well. Okay. Uh, I kind of want to clean up this wire here a little bit as well. Let's do this. Alright, so we're a quarter of the way to all ready to go. This is already good, this is already good. And what should our target be? Uh, the distance that we went last time was like 60k. Let's aim for Mireshka orbit, see how far that is. Uh, Mireska orbit. Distance is 40,000. We want something about 50% further away than this one. So maybe in the Wexivus system? Actually, it'd probably be better... It'd probably be better if we aim for an asteroid field. Because then there's no, uh, on the other end, there's no travel time in a solar system. Uh, so maybe, maybe Stardust? Stardust might be a little bit far. Distance is... Wait, what? There we go, 64k. Hmm. That might be cutting it a little bit close, but it's kind of perfect, honestly. Something weird is happening. First time trying to play Factorio and the lights on my Logitech G813 keyboard go out and don't work. Anyone having this issue? Um, I actually had the opposite problem where I didn't want the lights to turn on. Uh, it it, it was too bright, it kept turning on the, turning the lights on my, uh, the gamer lights on my mouse, like, orange. Uh, I remember having some difficulty finding the option, oh, he here we go, other settings, enable Razer Chroma support, or Logitech LED support, that might be it. I presume you would find something different depending on the brands you're using here. So it's under other settings in Factorio, and there's probably also something in a different program that you might have to change as well with the, uh, with the lighting settings. All right, what should we do while we wait for this to warm up? Um, let's have a look at our thermofluid issues, which I think are going to be resolved pretty soon, actually. Although I'm seeing zero negative 273 degree thermofluid in these two blocks, that's actually really weird. 
There should at least be a whiff of it. Oh, there's no cryonite slush here yet? Oh. Oh, 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 I'm glad I looked. There's like two little pieces of rail that are missing on the roundabouts. Um... It looks like they should be able to get here, but yeah, no path. And heading to... What are you heading to? You're trying to pick it up. Oh, this one. Okay, so this one has no path, and this one is waiting its turn to pick up Cryonite Slush from the same place. And therefore, both of the trains that are scheduled to come down here are actually blocked by a single missing piece of rail. Middle pylon blocked a pipe. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Thank you. I forgot that these ones are a little bit off-center. Good call. Uh, Fre Friesen Peter and Boshock, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Wait, is that without LTN? Uh, is what without LTN? This would have happened with... Th this could have happened with vanilla stations, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it could. The only thing LTN does is the scheduling. Because one... Well, I suppose... I suppose because these stations have the same name, um, the train up here would have just gone to a different station with that name. But to get around uh, the ambiguity of identical station names, LTN uh, gives the trains a schedule. Assuming there's any uh, duplicates of that station name, uh, it gives it a temporary stop that is aimed exactly where the target station is. And then the next stop is at the station with that name. So there's our cryonite slush. Fantastic. Oh, I kind of didn't realize when I put these here that only half of the pumps are going to work at any one time. Uh, I mean, it's not a problem or anything, but I guess I could just get rid of half of these pumps. Sorry, I meant whether you are using LTN or not, because it looked like it is without... Uh, no, this is with LTN. You can see the extra entities around the stations here. Alright, cool. So hopefully that is actually giving us... or will be giving us antimatter stream at the maximum rate from now on. Oh, this is actually full. Okay, it's not all the way full. But considering it got that full before a train came to pick it up, uh, that is probably a very good sign. Skyburner, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I think we're getting on top of Antimatter Stream again. That's good. Alright, um, a nice bonus if we do set Stardew as our target. Um... We could actually take advantage of some of the infrastructure that's already there. I could just put down a clamp somewhere where we've already got... Oh, this is perfect. I think. Maybe. Um, I could put a clamp somewhere where we've already got media point defenses. That one's going to be in the way of another ship. This ship is kind of large, though. Oh, we could put it here? And it wouldn't 
block the other ship. I could even just add an energy beam to warm up this ship when it gets here for a little while, if it turns out that we've gone slightly further than we should. I could have it park here. That would work. So we're going to have a clamp right about there. And then mark all of this stuff for deconstruction. I went too far, actually. No, I didn't. Here it is. Alright, so I'm going to put a clamp here once I get there. Do we have a storage chest somewhere? Yeah, we do. Um, I'm going to put a clamp here, and this is where we're going to park this ship. Uh, I may add an energy beam to recharge this ship a bit when it gets here. Um, but this will just be sort of a a point for it to automatically come to and then leave. Um, and we may... If we do the energy beam thing, we'll probably just add a timer to it. So that it'll stay here for like a minute or two. Uh, until however long it takes for this to warm up. Do you find the limit for moons... Did you find the limit... For moons to scan. Uh, no, I didn't actually. We've still got... I have no idea how many zones left to discover still. If we're at zone discovery 225, and there's, what, 300 planets, 300 moons. We did discover a bunch of zones without zone discovery, but yeah, I would say we have a couple of hundred at least to go. Narvez. Delta V from Narvez. It's very close. Cryonite, small moon. Uh, Nostos? Uranium. 5.2k, really far away. I forgot to check if it had a structure, which it doesn't. That's a lot of moons. I think we're starting to find mostly moons. Whittier, Chorus... Whittier is Cryonite. Uh, Chorus? Or us. Really close. No biters. Rather small. Uh, whoops. Hit soon. Uh, really small vulcanite. I mean, Vitamelange. Not very interesting. Limos and Mechania. That's not very interesting either. Amachania. Or is it Amachania? Alright, so nothing of interest for exploiting. And no... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? No mysterious structures that we haven't raided yet. Captain Tree. Good to see you again, by the way. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, I think I said that earlier. It's fine. Alright, so... We're already at 5k heat. That's good. Uh, we could get our old deconstruction spiders on the ground to pick up 
all of this stuff. And then I think we'll get started removing this wall. Wait, this is a new spaceship? What's it for? Uh, this is our first Nexus ship. Morpheus out. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so I did a bit of experimenting, um, and what I found is if you're going speed 100, this thing will consume 100, uh, this, this thing will consume 1 gigawatt. Uh, so, and, and it has a cost of 2,000 hull stress. So we can't exactly do it with a small ship. Um, so we have quite a large power plant to support this. This is not the end game ship. We need to go 250 speed with this thing. Uh, for 10 minutes in order to win the game with spaceship. Good morning from an absolutely beautiful day in England. Good morning to you as well. Um, but this one is just for giving us the interstellar travel data that we will need to win the game, and presumably for uh, Deep Space Science Pack 4 as well. Yep, the extended uh, Deep Space catalog. Oh, right, forgot there was a science card that needed it. Yes, indeed. Uh, so we're just waiting, we've already got our antimatter stream, uh, just a couple of tanks is actually way more than we need, relative to how quickly we're going to run out of heat for this. Um, come to think of it. Hmm. No, I'm pretty sure from the test we did earlier, this will be fine. We are going a little further than when we tested it before, but we should still have way more than enough to get back. Uh, it's really just the energy beam. Uh, the stored heat in the receiver and the heat exchangers that I'm more concerned about. So we're going to get this thing to 10,000 degrees, and then we're going to go for a little ride. Uh, in the meantime, we're finding a couple of things to do while we wait for that. And I guess I'll leave the spiders parked there. Uh, Antimatter stream is looking very good now, I think. Let's look at the graph. Uh, Antimatter stream. Yeah, it's it's looking like it's steady at... Wait, one hour, ten hours. This is one hour. That's up there. These two graphs don't seem to match. 71k... 71k. That's weird. We're definitely at the peak right now. But over here it makes it look like we're not. Uh, but yeah, we seem to be producing antimatter stream at about the peak of when it, uh, of as much, as fast as we've ever produced it. Maybe a bit more consistently now. That antimatter is juiced, indeed. Maholic, good to see you again, by the way. Wait, didn't you raid me? Oh, no, that was my clat. The M's. The M's are here. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How do you process all the excess 25 degree thermofluid from making components for science packs? They come back to our thermofluid blocks. We only produce 25 degree thermofluid in the first place if this thing is basically empty. Uh, and we have trains drop off 
25 degree thermofluid here, uh, it becomes cool thermofluid, it becomes cold thermofluid, it becomes super cold thermofluid. Seems a bit rough having an estimate. If they let us wire up the heat, it'd be fine. Yeah, definitely. Um, the only thing I can think... The, the best way I can think to um, to measure it... Well, not measure it, but we can just have it on a timer. We can definitely rely on the energy that's being beamed in from the sun. Uh, since this is all just solar panels and energy beam emitters. Uh, it's very, very, very reliable. Um, the only other way I could think... We could check if it's over 5,000 by having, like, a, a little separate power plant that... No, never mind. Also, uh, underground heat pipe would allow us to resupply this thing with heat faster when it comes back. There is an inventory sensor combinator that might output the heat as a signal. Interesting. Razus, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well, by the way. Alright, so we're already at 6.6k. It's not going to be that much longer. Um, oh, you can easily see where all the spaceships are if you activate the turret coverage. Oh. How is our antimatter ship doing? It's in orbit right now. Did we catch up with our needs for antimatter down here? Uh, not really. Yeah, we've got a lot of catching up to do, but I think we have enough throughput to support what we're trying to do now. Uh, in fact, I think... I think I would like to... make another antimatter ship. I think this is it. Um, I'm just gonna place this... Here. and we're going to bring uh, we might need our construction spiders but more importantly uh, there is a spaceship Buildatron over here it struggled on the 600 seconds as it was I wonder if my victory ship can even Victory ship anymore. Uh-oh. Wait, what changed? That was the distance it could look... It could loop to pick up cards. I estimated at how many degrees Celsius it dropped after 10 seconds. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think I will use uh, antimatter reactors for the victory ship. Probably. Alright, deconstruction spiders have reached their destination. The only thing that's stopping me from eventually trimming this, uh, trimming Nalvis by a lot, is uh, crude oil pickup areas. Most of the temporary mines are have been removed. They should just disable receivers on spaceship if that's their intent. If that's their intent, sure. Sounds like they're forcing reactors. I recently found the blueprint reader combinator mod, which is amazing if you want to fill cargo rockets with certain resources to make your blueprint, i.e. nuclear. Blueprint reader. Oh, yeah, yeah. I definitely want to try that at some point. No, um, I think all they would have to do if they want to discourage using beam receivers on ships uh, is greatly reduce the heat capacity. Um, because these things can hold on to a ludicrous amount of energy. 
that's why we're able to use them for our ships, even though the ships can't receive beams while they're in motion. Gentle Hedgehog, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, what else can we be doing? Um, this is... There is a bot holding on to Cryonite indefinitely. I shouldn't have needed a storage chest here, but here we are. We still haven't finished any products here. We have no Naquium processors, cube or singularity, uh, time space anomaly data. And all of that is a long way to say that we don't have enough Naquium coming in. Why is there dropped cargo just sitting here? There's like several arcospheres on the ground that are not being picked up. We definitely have storage. What? What? Uh, it seems like our... Wow, so we're actually at the point where we've always got 49 logistic bots in motion here. I don't know why it... I don't know why we lost number 50. But, yeah, it looks like we actually need to... We actually need more logistic bots to move the arcospheres around. That's kind of great, actually. That's sort of a cool milestone. A good problem to have. Um, logistic bot... Wait, why do we not have any logistic bots in this chest? We're looking for 50. Oh, it's the request stack threshold. Okay. Hmm. I don't want to request that many bots, but it might be the easiest way to deal with this. No, it's definitely overkill. 40 stack threshold. I wish we could set different request thresholds for different resources. There is one way that we could do it if we cycle different sets of signals on a timer, but I don't particularly want to bother with that. Um, this is... Oh, I actually could fit them here. We also still have no construction bots here. I just wanted a handful. Wait, it probably has to be a construction bot to pick this up. That's why it hasn't happened yet. Alright, fine, we'll go fix that. Where's our spider? It's in our... in our pocket. What CPU and RAM do you have for running this save? Uh, one moment, please. Uh, it's in the down there part, and also, here we go. Uh, Core i7-10-0700F. Uh, two sticks of effectively 2933 RAM. Uh, dual channel. And the graphics card's kind of a good mid-range. Your down there part is empty? Wait, what? Definitely added it to the down there part. Where's my down there part? Oh no. Well, I'll have to have another look at that. All there is is ongoing votes. Yeah, what is that doing there? Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and solve that mystery sometime soon. There is a Dead Cells, Cells extension, but that's it. Yeah, that's a fun extension. I should stream Dead Cells on a variety day and use that extension again. It lets the audience make things uh, more interesting, shall we say. Yep, 
Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna brute force this. I'm gonna put like way too many um way too many bots in these chests. Mucky esque? Yeah, a little bit like that. Mucky esque. I guess I haven't been doing that enough. Alright, we're at 8.5k though. Uh, by the time we sort this out, we'll almost be ready to launch. I can't believe all this time we've had, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 Arcospheres out of circulation. Uh, how is our Arcosphere production, by the way? Arcosphere. Uh, we are still making them. And... Judging by this... Let's see, that's five arms right there. Yeah, we could just let our existing system of bringing in more Arcospheres go on indefinitely. Although they are a bit more expensive than they should be. Maybe it's time to retire... Oh, the Arcosphere ship is out and about right now, actually. It's not here. It's about to... it's actually just about to get started. It's got another 40, I think, uh, Arcosphere collectors. Whoops. Wait, that's the wrong... Let's see. That's water. Oh, this is set request, so we can't read it directly. Uh, we've got 2 times 20. Yeah, we've got 40 Arcosphere collectors ready to go here. We'll see how many we get. Alright. Uh, I guess I just picked up those Arcos... This is why I got mysterious Arcospheres in my inventory earlier. Um, I don't know what that clicking was doing. I, I think I was thinking of that backwards. Um, yeah, in fact, let me just confirm... Let's grab an Arcosphere. Throw it on the ground. Uh, personal logistics and auto trash off. Personal roboport off. I'm pretty sure the dropped cargo follows the same rules as if I do this. So the fact that we didn't have a handful of construction bots here, that's probably overkill. Um meant that that didn't get fixed. Alright, let's go... Logistic bot, construction bot... Connect this to here... Get out of the way player character... Thank you for the follow, Cupid Stunt. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And I'm just gonna crank this up to something stupid. We're not going to need another delivery of logistic bots for a long time. And since we've already got the construction bots here and they never die, um, we won't bother automating that part. In fact, I can just get rid of that. Let the attrition begin, indeed. Uh, I think our target was only... 350 logistic bots. Also, did we just get that bot stuck forever? Yes, we did. You're coming with me. And back to our ship, I guess. Oh, I'm not carrying Argo Spheres, am I? Nope. 
Have you finished all research? Uh, not quite. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that are still in the red. Uh, so we've got a, a little ways to go left here. Uh, actually, I was trying to finish Deep Space Science Pack 4. Um, we do have a bunch of resources to wait on before that can happen. We had a bit of a crisis with antimatter stream not getting produced because we couldn't keep up with the thermo fluid after making a lot of ships. Uh, so I've defuncted all of these old thermo fluid builds, which are a bit uh, suboptimal, and we've built some new blocks down here. Uh, here's the initial creation of thermofluid. We only do that if we're running out. Uh, trains bring the thermofluid back to here. Uh, we turn it into negative 10 degree thermofluid. Trains drop off the negative 10 here and we keep that empty. We pump the negative 10 from here directly into these machines. And we only pump it into here from these machines uh, if there's less than a train load of cool thermofluid for pickup. Uh, and if there's significantly more than one train load here, we try to pump it back into these machines as well. Uh, and then we've got a drop off for Cryonite Slush and we're doing the Crynet Slush versions of the cold and super cold thermofluid recipes. Uh, this is probably about as neat as it gets for 16 of these under one beacon. The ratio for these two is one to one. Although until we're completely full on cold thermofluid here, because it can flow to here, we're not going to get a perfect ratio, uh, we're not going to get the max rate of uh, super cold thermofluid for a while, but that max rate is actually 2.9k. So this is capable of going pretty quick under certain circumstances. Slushies, indeed. Okay, I'm just starting this mod, so getting prepared for quite a few hours. Oh yeah, I think a speedrun of this mod would have to be... I don't know, maybe even in the triple digits if you had until the end of time to optimize it. Maybe? Uh, what are we at? 10,000 degrees. Fantastic. It's time for a test run. Episode 179, about six hours apiece. Um, probably. The average, I would imagine, is five to six hours, yeah. We've had a few shorter streams for various reasons, uh, especially while I was working. It would be really nice if I could find... Uh, actual part-time work as opposed to casualized nightmare mode. Arcospheres are way too slow. Yeah, that's true. Fraser, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Let's get ready to go. Cool, check. Water, check. Heat, check. Uh, input steam totally saturated, as a matter of fact. Hovering around thousand hour or so mark. Uh, thousand hour mark so far then. Uh, yeah, we're at like uh, a, a bit over a month of game time. Not that I've not that I haven't been taking my sweet time stopping to redesign things and stuff like that. Alright, let's see. We're going to Stardust. 
And away we go. Wait, 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 wait. I should... Uh, let, yeah, let's go back. This orbit. Go. Did I do the IDs here? 223, 223, and 223. Uh, what I forgot was to bring some spaceship walls. And maybe a bit of floor and stuff, just in case something breaks. Not that I think it will. That should be all we need, really. Before UPS? No. 7.50 odd hours then for in-game time before UPS. Yeah. Yeah, it's been... So much longer than I would have guessed. Uh, I definitely wouldn't have built things as big if I'd known that UPS was going to get this bad, even after upgrading the RAM. This mud pack is a lifestyle? Absolutely. Alright, are we totally full? I mean... It's going to take a while to fill this completely. Um, it, we're very much full on the antimatter stream. We are at 10,000 degrees here. Uh, water's fine. Alright, let's go to... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I do have spaceship clamps. And combinators. Wait. Oh, that's a recipe combinator. Yeah, regular combinators are here. Okay, cool. Stardust. Was that 600 hours of Factorio, then I started streaming, now I'm 2600 hours. Yep, that is definitely how that works. Alright. Speed is going up. Uh, Nexus is consuming a lot of power and doing nothing because we're still in the solar system. Uh, I did have a good think about ways around this. It's hard to detect when we're not in the solar system anymore. Um, but if we have a decent amount of solar power... Well, actually, I guess... I guess it's not really that decent. 55 megawatts, and we're already using over a gigawatt. Yeah, it's actually kind of irrelevant. The solar power only helps us when we're just sitting idle somewhere, so we're not constantly eating whatever we're using as a source of power. Oh, that is a, that is a chunker of an asteroid. Wait, what's the biggest asteroid we've killed so far? Asteroid. All time. Small, medium, large. How is an industrial furnace... Aster... Aster... A-S-T-E-R... Is it in the description somewhere? I don't see A-S-T-E-R in here. Oh, faster. Bigger, faster, and with more module slots. Yep, that's why, that's why Industrial Furnace showed up there. We have lost one spaceship console, apparently. I don't remember that. F. Aster, indeed. Uh, I almost missed something in chat. Don't you get... A signal from the command center that tells you location, so bounce from that when not in a system. Um, we actually only get our destination, which is uh, Stardust right now. We can look at our destination and our distance to destination, and we can, like, figure out exactly 
Well, it's a little hard to figure out exactly, because when we point at this, it just says 61k. Um, but we could look at when we get out of Calidus, what the distance is, and maybe start this when the distance is that low. Uh, and then we would need different circuit logic for the return trip as well. It's it's a whole thing. Uh, it's a whole lot easier just to let it consume power for a little bit longer. Is this us? G Gilamort. I haven't named the ship yet. Uh, so this is our first Nexus ship. We could just call it Nexus. I don't know, what's a better name? Fuzzy Search, indeed. Wait, so stupid question, I just started... Excuse me. Uh, just started ore mining on Navis and I'm getting Pyroflux as a regent. Now is it me, or do I just not see anything that I can use it for yet? I don't know what Pyroflux is, I'm guessing that is K2, unless the 0.6 update added something. Um, but you do get Vulcanite out of vanilla core fragments, for example. That's the only way to get it off of Nalvis. I had a thought, read Delta V from Nalvis as the signal. Delta V from Nalvis. But these are the only signals that we can read from the console. Um, these red ones right here. We've got distance to destination, destination, the ID of this console. Uh, our targets, no, our actual speed is on the output, our target speed is on the input. And asteroid density of where we are right now. Read Delta V from Nalvis as the signal to turn around. We would have to set the destination to Nalvis to see how far away from it we are. The first signal is distance to destination, yes. So have that and bingo. I was planning a Nexus ship that never stops flying. Interesting. Nexus Prime? Maybe. That might be good. Uh, Fraser K. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, Bryson Peter and Talus. Welcome, welcome. That's in the new point six. Oh, interesting. Turn Pyroflux with water into hot steam for turbines. Oh, you can get hotter steam from it? You no longer get Vulcanite. Interesting. I thought Pyroflux is to turn IE iron plate into ingots, or am I wrong? It's, it just sounds like Pyroflux is Vulcanite, more or less. Jakubaz, Giovi, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Vilma, welcome, welcome. Found it. I can make solid rocket fuel from it. That sounds exactly like Vulcanite. Except for the new stuff as well. So when that gets to 30k, it turns around or something. Oh yeah, we can have it turn around. We could point it somewhere extra far away. And have it turn around when... Something we can measure that we need to fly gets low enough. Heat is our actual bottleneck and we can't measure that. But we could probably... Mm, the water doesn't balance. Uh, I think water would be the best thing we could measure, but look at this, it's all over the place. The high temp heat exchangers have a capacity of 2k. This one has 1.4k, this one has 1.7. So even if we read all of these storage tanks, it's going to be a bit off. That said, we could read all of the storage tanks, and once water gets below a certain amount, we know that we're down to, like, about 7,500 heat.
we would first have to observe exactly what water level we're at uh, once this heat is half empty. But yeah, you could have it, you, you could aim it at a distant destination and then have it turn around uh, at about the halfway point. Definitely. I thought you got all that location information on a wire as well. I think it's in the Informatron. Yeah, it just doesn't include uh, where the ship actually is. Um, we've got the console number indicates the spaceship's ID. Speed signal indicates the ship's current speed. Negative if stopped or anchored. Distance signaled is distance to the selected location, the target destination. Uh, a fourth signal indicates the current destination, if any. D is asteroid density. A, if the ship is anchored. I never noticed that. A, if the ship is anchored. Okay. Uh, and input signals are just speed, launch, and destination. So yeah, there isn't actually a signal to tell you where the ship is right now. Or what it's closest to. Um, where is that ship? Here it is. Uh, when we click on it, we can see closest destination, but we can't actually get it as a signal. Uh, so, it seems we're having no trouble with the asteroids. Let's have a look at the power consumption. Oh, it is nice and flat. Look at that. Um, this line roughly, in, uh, pretty accurately indicates our speed as well, because the Nexus consumes more power the faster we go. It's actually at 1.9 gigawatts. Yeah, 185 speed. My Nexus ship flies Nervous Orbit, Kaleidoscope, and back, but the nerf to the energy beam means I have means I halve it and turn around. Oh, the energy beam was nerfed? How did they nerf it? Water plus steam left equals turn around. Yes. I, I was also considering using just tanks of 5,000 degree steam. Um, but we would still have to... We would, we would have to store the water output unless we wanted to flash it to get rid of it with a electric boiler, the amount of power that would use would be pretty counterproductive, I think. Half the heat capacity. That's still a lot. It really is. Yeah, if they really wanted to discourage it, I would think they would go down to like a fifth or something, or less. Are systems different sizes, or is there a standard? They're different sizes. I keep a lot of 5,000 degree steam on my ship, fair enough. Oh, okay, so you've got like something like this, and or uh, antimatter reactors, and you've got a 5,000 degree steam buffer. And when the steam actually starts running out, that's when you book it. I think I have 6 to 10 tanks of it. 250k total water plus steam. Hi Hex, Sepulznia, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Chucky, good to see you again also. What does the purple spinning thing do? Uh, this is... it has two purposes. Currently we've only got the one recipe. Um, it turns blank data cards into interstellar travel data, but only when we're moving in interstellar space, and it consumes a ton of power to do that. Um, the faster we go, the faster it goes, and the faster we go, the more power it consumes. Uh, this is the power consumption of the Nexus, and this is the power consumption of all our engines and defenses. Way down here. Um, so as you can see, 
Uh, it's literally like 99% of our power consumption at this speed. And uh, the other thing that it does once we unlock it with research is you can get spaceship victory with it. You need to maintain 250 speed. Uh, and the Nexus costs 2,000 container stress. That's why, despite not having any containers here except for the fluids, uh, we're at 21, 23 container stress. Oh, what, 2100 size? Thought 3000 was minimum? Uh, it remains to be seen if we can beat the game with less than 2500 uh, hull stress? Uh, hull integrity? I definitely want to try it. Um, but yeah, with 10 antimatter engines and, like, literally the, pretty much the smallest ship we can make, uh, hull stress-wise, uh, container stress-wise, um, this is the speed that we're capable of, 185. Uh, and also, I think if we were going faster, let's see, we might actually have enough uh, heat exchangers here. 562 times 5. Uh, 2810. That's like 2.8 of... It's just a little bit less than 2.8 of these high temp turbine generators, which give us a gigawatt each. Um, considering the Nexus is literally like 99% of our power consumption, uh, I think these 5 high temp heat exchangers would give us enough power for the end game ship. So maybe almost literally this ship plus a bunch of engines. I don't know how many engines though. And the whole stress is going to go up when we add more engines. We're the ship is going to have to be wider. Um, it can be more of a triangle. We could put these engines, like, here in a kind of zigzag pattern. They'd have to be one tile further back so that we can get antimatter stream down there. Um, they don't necessarily have to be in this, uh, like, diamond shape. Um, but yeah, uh, I think we're probably going to have to go significantly bigger than this, not just sort of an upgrade to this ship in order to maintain 250. Need 13 high temp and 7 turbines, I think, for victory? Uh, well, we, if we maintain, like, exactly 250 speed, or like 251, 252, it's going to be 2.5 gigawatts for the Nexus. So that is like... that That's uh, like 2.5 of these high temp turbine generators. Um, which is... About 2,557 steam per second. These do 562 per second. Uh, so we could definitely pull it off with five high temp heat exchangers. It's a different power requirement for victory ship? Oh no. Oh no. That's even worse. This ship would work if you just had two of it side by side. <laughs> Maybe. Probably in the tech tree tooltips? Uh, I don't think so. It really didn't tell us anything about how much power the Nexus consumes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, absolutely nothing. There isn't the slightest hint of how much power this uses. Victory ship needs at least 6 gigawatts. 
Oof. Yeah, it's going to be really tough to try and keep it relatively small. Uh, we should be checking on where we are, though. Alright, we've actually not even... maybe a fifth of the way to Stardust. And we've consumed 650 degrees Celsius. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think at this rate... We're going to run out of heat. We're going to get to uh, Stardust easily enough. But if my estimate of how far we've gone is correct... It might be even optimistic to say we're a fifth of the way there. 650 times 5. 3,200... 50 heat. We need that to be 2,500 or less. If we were going to go there and back on one charge. Was 61k when you started? What's the delta V you have left? Uh, 43k. But that's just for one leg of the journey. One third of the way. Almost. Yeah, we'll see how much heat we have when we get there. And I'm pretty sure I've already got a spare, probably a few spare, honestly. Uh, let's see. 84, 26, 84, 26, 84, 26, 84, 26. Yeah, we've got four beams and we only need one aimed at this one. Um, so we can pump plenty of power uh, back into this ship without even sending a construction ship over here. What's this one doing? Oh yeah, we do need that. I, I completely forgot about Oblung Lobolata, despite spending enough time there to learn how to say that. Do we even have... Yeah, we have many Oblong Lobolata ships. Why is this one not taking off? It's got antimatter. Huh? It thinks it doesn't have enough antimatter. It's looking for 200k. But it's only reading two of these? What? Maybe I copied this logic from somewhere and forgot to change it. No, this is specific to this place, because some of these are ion engines. Ion stream has to be greater than 39k, or antimatter stream has to be greater than 199k. Uh, we need two. Wait, what? Green equals two? That doesn't seem right. What on earth have I done here? Hi, Minecraft's Irui. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Not enough tanks wired up? Yeah, but I, I'm i pretty sure I would have had two of these tanks wired up for all of the Oblong Lobolata ships that use antimatter. Much easier not to change that. One, two... One, two, and one, two, okay. And they are shaped exactly like the old ion ships, because I wanted them to go to the same outposts. Um, let's see, this should definitely, well, first of all, why is this green equals two? We, we need to meet three of these conditions. There's no naquitite in the ship check. Uh, all of this stuff is in the ship. Not check. We're missing construction bots? We do have construction bots here. It's in a request chest. Alright, I think we'll get rid of the check for construction bots. So that condition is met. 
Why is water in... Oh, no, 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 no. Well, that's probably fine for now, but it should have been green signal equals three. Or greater than or equal to three. But it's only going to be equal to three. We're looking for those two conditions plus either one of these... Few... What, what are you doing? Why? What? What just happened? I even removed the signal from here. The launch signal. What? What even? Alright, so this has got to be green equals three. Uh, and we're looking for... Yeah, 40,000 ion stream. Or... 100,000 antimatter stream. I'd better go check we don't have some oblong ships that are headed in the wrong direction. Oh, this looks for water as well. Okay, that's fine. Uh, probably easy to find them here. Oblong 8 is empty. It's got water, it's got fuel, it's got heat. This is fine. Oblong 6 is coming in. Oblong 2 and 3. This is Deadwood 3, actually. Oblong 12, actually. Still... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to Nalvis with you. Well then. Uh, that's that's going to be a nice little boost of Necrotite. I believe all of our Oblong ships were just waiting their turn. Uh, where even is this? Here it is. Oblong 2. Okay. Uh, if we click through those real quick. Nervous, 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 nervous. Yeah, pretty much all of them. What's this one doing? Uh, none of the ships are actually at Oblong Lobelada, so why are you not clamped? Anchor to Oblong Lobelada. Yeah, there's no ship there. Um, Anchor 371. Three seventy. Did I not update that somewhere? I think this is the problem. Uh, anchor three seventy to three seventy. Three seventy. Oblong. This one. Three seventy one. Three seventy one. I'm pretty sure they're all supposed to be three seventy one. Okay. Which one was it? And I'll change this first. 371 to 371. And... Go. Okay, cool. How did it launch lol? I'm so confused. That makes two of us. So you hold 50k, you have three wide up for 150k max, condition 199k. I thought it was two that were wired up. Can't see the fourth wire. Can you have more clamps with the same ID so more spaceships can land on the same planet at a time? Yes. In fact, we're doing that at Stardust. We've actually got uh, one, two, three, four, five outposts here for Naquitite. And they all simply have the same setup uh, with the anchor. So whenever, um, whenever there's one available, a ship will land here. And if... Uh, let's see... I, want, I, I don't think we're going to have... Here we are. No, that one's on its way. 
I don't think we're going to have any of them waiting their turn to land here right now. Um, but they just do the same thing as what's happening at Nalvis at the moment. Nice. Yeah, it's a good system. Well designed. Um, Alright, so where are we right now? We are not quite halfway to Stardust. And our heat has dropped down 9,000? I mean, 1,000. Hmm, maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Because a lot more of the distance is inside Calidus than it looks like. That's probably why. Uh, we still may as well beam some heat back into the receiver when we get there. I need to park there to set up the automation anyway. How are we doing for data cards? That's actually quite a lot. Um, interstellar. We've been making uh, 44 per minute while we're flying. That's not too bad if you ask me. I'm sure it's going to be faster than the other tier 4 data cards. Power problems? Uh, no. No, we're good. In fact, we haven't had the slightest blip uh, at all with this. Very occasionally, uh, it'll dip into the accumulators if, like, two of the shields get hit by something big at the same time. But we've got so many accumulators that the output, uh, the max output from the accumulators is very, very high. It's chest flashing, not power. Yes, yes. Need the three to four big rocks to hit? <laughs> yeah, then we'll get a little blip of actually slowing down. Alright, so so I would say we are probably actually more than halfway to Stardust, considering the extra distance that's hidden in Calidus. Uh, distance 30k. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and we've got... We've used less than 1200 heat. So all of a sudden this is actually looking really optimistic. No RoboPort for in-flight repairs in case something breaks? Nah, I, I think... I think our double shields are sufficient, honestly. It takes way more than a big boulder to actually break one of the shields. And as long as they're up, they recharge incredibly quickly. So it would take incredibly bad luck. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Yes, indeed. The man has faith. Um, I mean, I've built, I've built ships that looked like they were working and eventually got hit by an asteroid. Um, but I don't think this is it. Not with the double layers of shields. I quite like the, uh, I, I wish we could be a bit more fine-tuned with how we place the shields, but considering the tools we've got to work with, I quite like this. What's the range on the side lasers? About this. They don't do much. Um, this one has two kills. Actually, I'm kind of surprised... I guess this one doesn't shoot unless it would hit the actual spaceship. So it's not protecting the, uh, the shield itself. I'd still rather have the extra shields back here than not. This is exactly the kind of thing that 
very rarely hits the ship, like hits the engine at the back. Alright. Uh, I don't think we're ever gonna build... I don't think we're ever gonna build a ship for the Nexus that consumes a full chest of blank data cards in one trip. Um, I think by the time we're doing that, it's literally just the end game ship. I mean, actually, the end game ship, considering we're going uh, most of the speed that we need to beat the game, uh, I guess if we if we built an end game ship and used it to make interstellar travel data, um, it would still take quite a while to go through one chest of blank data cards. I would have thought that they would shoot anything that moved. Yeah, no, they don't. Um, I'm actually curious as to how that works now that you mention it. Um, it's, it's something I am mildly surprised that a mod is able to do. Uh, like, all of these are marked as enemies, if you look at them on the radar, but the laser turrets only shoot the ones that would collide with the ship. Curious. The game was trolling me hard on my first endgame ship. It ended up going 249.9 max speed. Oh, no. Wow, I just got here. What the hell is this sorcery? Amazing. Uh, thank you. This is a Nexus ship. Um, it's the first one we've built with a Nexus on it. The Nexus requires uh, blank data cards in. There's another recipe that literally wins the game, but this one is just interstellar travel data out. It only works when we're traveling in interstellar space. And the faster we go, uh, the more power it consumes. That blue line at the top of our power graph is the power consumption from the Nexus. It's literally 99% of our power consumption. Uh, and this is at a speed of 185. So... Um, oh, also the Nexus costs 2,000 container stress, so it's not like we could have built a significantly smaller ship to do this. Uh, whichever one of these numbers is higher is what counts. So we could have the smallest ship in the world and put this on it and we'd be up, up to 2,000. Um, but yeah, the interstellar travel data is the last of our data cards. We've actually produced, or at least designed, uh, something to build every type of data card for um, the Deep Space Catalog Tier 4, Extended Deep Space Catalog. And then we're going to need that, plus a bunch of stuff that we've already got in order to make the final science pack. Cool. Holy hell, I keep saying that the modding scene for Factorio is amazing, but goddamn, yeah, definitely. When you say there's a recipe that just wins the game, you're kind of underselling the fact that it took several hundred hours to get there. I mean, yeah. But... If it... If it took several hundred hours to get to it, and it was literally just press a button, it would still be press a button to win the game, right? Oop. Yeah, see how quickly that recharges? It uses a ton of power. The, the, fast, the lower it gets, the faster it recharges, and the faster it recharges, the more energy it uses. Um... If we look at... Th this is what it looks like when the shields take damage. 
It spikes up and then curves back down with the energy consumption. Easy, indeed. I guess technically the rocket recipe in vanilla just wins the game. Yes. That's kind of what K2 is. Press a button to win the game after a few hundred hours to get there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this thing up here, uh, the alternate recipe on it, uh, we need to keep this keep the ship moving at a speed of 250 for 10 minutes. Uh, and I'm told it uses even more power on that recipe. So I was calculating it thinking we would need 2.5 gigawatts of power uh, and plus a little bit of change for the endgame ship. But apparently we're going to need way more than that. I mean, in the end, there will always be that one last button press before the victory screen, but you've been preparing for it by designing the ships for quite some time, yes. And I've had a lot of fun doing it. Alright, uh, what was that name? Nexus something. Let me scroll up again. I think we'll go with that. Nexus Prime. Sure, why not? I dub the... Nexus Prime. Can you give an overview of your factory? Oh my goodness. Um, depending on how broad the strokes are or not, that could take a while. So basically, this is Nalvis. This is our starting planet. Um, everything, well, almost everything that we can do here with productivity modules, we do before sending it up to orbit. Uh, there's only one recipe, I think, in orbit that does allow productivity modules, and that is just the final consumption of science. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of intermediate products that uh, you can use productivity modules for. So we build those on the ground. We send them up mostly with these little shuttles. Uh, small as they are, they've actually got more than 50% uh, of an advantage of storage capacity over the cargo rockets. Um, and they also require way less of a logistical headache. Um, where do we even start? There's so much to go over if we were to do an overview of a late game space exploration base. Um, we've got all of this arranged into rail blocks, partly because I like rail blocks, uh, partly because in space exploration in particular, most recipes have outputs that you're not necessarily looking for. Uh, and if those outputs get saturated, uh, the machine won't give you the output that you are looking for. And there's so, so, so very many of these uh, side outputs that you have to deal with um, that I think a rail block is by far the best system. Um, because you can just have you know, junk data cards plus 25 degree thermofluid output over here. Whisk it away somewhere and deal with it and have this as a high priority pickup. Uh, what else? We got a whole lot of spaceships up here. This is where we build our spaceships. Is this a rail grid by choice or effective necessity? I would say effective necessity. I mean, I, I, I would be interested to hear other possibilities for how to deal with the many, 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 many uh, excess outputs from almost every recipe in uh, space exploration. 
In fact, I built a main base, uh, a main bus base up here earlier to get started. Uh, and the amount of belts that we had to have winding all the way back to some central area to process things was kind of ludicrous, honestly. Wide, 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 wide bus. Yeah, it would be very wide. Alex Hudson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It just takes more planning to deal with the recycling outputs directly. Yeah, it's also kind of... Uh, I don't like the way it looks a lot of the time. It's kind of unsightly, especially with... Um, oh, we still have this. Yeah, because we at the time we didn't have... Uh, What is this? Oh, here we go. Because at the time we built this, we didn't have a place for negative 10 degree thermofluid to go. We processed this back into negative 273, which meant we had to go negative 10 becomes negative 100 and also 25. Negative 100 becomes negative 273 and also 25. There's no way to do a nice layout with the hypercoolers, there just isn't. Um, and we needed all of this space just to keep up with this. Um, I generally prefer that to do that somewhere central. Uh, not always, though. The blank data cards... Um... Oh. I think I changed the way I did... Yeah, the original build with blank data cards. Oh no, here it is. We are dealing with contaminated cosmic water here directly. Because uh, it takes very little. We don't need to whisk that away somewhere. You can have a global Logibot network. Yeah, it's going to be very, very big though. And bots get slower. The, the, the larger the distance they have to cover... Um, the less speed. Pink pajamas, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Winning without trains is doable, though, if you go smaller scale. Took about 850 hours in total. Ouch. You can have a global... Yes, yes, yes. Played SE at least twice with local recycling. Partially local cooling, etc. Trains are probably just better. Uh, I mean, they do have their disadvantages, and it is possible to end up with uh, train traffic problems. We don't get much of this with this rail grid design, um, but certainly around the Omni smelters, which one way you could not get those traffic problems is just not make Omni smelters. Uh... And the blocks that we had earlier for Vitamelange had a lot of train traffic. That was really bad. But I think, actually... Uh, especially after vocalizing that just now, um, even more so, I think just depending on how you design the blocks, uh, this train grid is perfectly functional. I didn't use space trains, and it was 350 for me. What is your grid size? Uh, it is 108 by 108. We could. I'm pretty sure we can go a bit smaller on the crisscross bits up here, and if we only wanted to have room room for one train up here, we could make the whole thing smaller. But then we wouldn't really have room for one train here, one train here. I guess we could overlap those two stations, but for high throughput stuff, that's not going to be as good. Alright, we are almost at Stardust, kind of. ETA, 3 minutes 30. And we've used less than 2,000 degrees. It is going to be somewhat close. Relatively close. 
We have to keep this thing above 5,000 degrees, otherwise we stop getting power. The cool way to have a space base is to put it in an asteroid belt, so you can just mine minerals locally. Um, I suppose... I, I don't really like having to tap temporary mines over and over again. Uh, it's really... once I have enough core mining, it's really just something that I do because I need a, like, a burst of, uh, whatever resource. I mean, we've all but cleared out all of this visible area in Nalvis. Um, I guess there's 10 million copper way over there. It, it takes a surprisingly short amount of time to go through, like, 10 million copper, uh, with this playthrough. And creating mines over and over and over again is not my favorite part uh, of Factorio. That's why I built the so-called lazy mine blueprint right here. Uh, we could probably improve on it. I think bots might be better, actually. Um, but the whole point is you just saturate a mine with this, and then you don't have to... Um, you don't have to do the work of building the belts and all that stuff. SE.6, you've got to create core miners over and over again, but at least it's only one item. Yeah, so there's like, what, a specific spot that you can put a core miner down on? Or how does that work? I hope it's as easy as that. It's going to make the logistics a bit more of a headache. Yeah, a hole in the ground. Yeah, that's pretty annoying, honestly. Because um, I really do like the fact that... Like, we have to go to the trouble of making all of these outposts, but eventually we can just sort of standardize them. But, no... Apparently we're going to have to have, like, train networks or something on every outpost, which is going to cost more UPS, and the save file size is going to go brr, um, if we want decent throughput. Scale the summit. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What do you mean, Maholic? You have to redo the logistics over and over? So how much data did we... wow. Okay, I may have... I may just stand corrected here. Uh, if we built a ship with uh, antimatter reactors so that we could have tons of fuel for power, maybe it would be possible to get an entire chest full of this stuff in one trip. You have to manually do every single core. You can just belt or train ship. Oh, chat, go fast. You can just belt or train ship the mine fragments to a central processing, and it's not that much of a hassle. Major advantages of local recycling are that by design you can't end up with overflow of byproducts. Fluids don't run into pipe limits. And since you only feed what is needed into the system, it's much more... Dynamic. I don't know about that first part. Because you still need to... You still need to manage the output. Uh, whatever output event it eventually turns into at some place. It's kind of like how... When we deal with core mining... Well, actually core mining. Uh, core fragment processing is a perfect example. Um, because we get all of these outputs. Whenever you get multiple outputs, you have to have enough storage for both, otherwise it's going to stop. Um, whether you output it all onto a belt and then filter it, or if you have filter inserters that output into different chests or belts or something, uh, it ultimately comes... that's a lot of coal. 
it ultimately comes down to the same problem. You're just shifting the problem in one direction or another. You're kidding. I think... Uh, it would appear we need to upgrade our item smasher. We've got over 120,000 vitamelange, copper, coal, iridite, and we're supposed to be destroying whatever we have a hundred... Oh no. What is going on here? What, where, where are we making... There's no copper here. What? Uh, oh, right, I see the problem. This has negative a million request priority, because this is where we get rid of stuff. But we're requesting stuff that we need to keep this working. Uh, what we could do is just locally turn copper into copper cable. Uh, what about iridite? We need vulcanite blocks for that. If we use the alternate recipe for delivery cannon capsules, we'd need to make sure we have vulcanite. Um, yeah, it's going to be easier at this stage if we just... Oh, did we get this ship built? We did not. Which means it's blocking all of our... Uh, it means it's blocking all of our antimatter stream. Better fix that in a hurry. Um, but yeah, I'm going to send the construction spiders over here. Let's get you back to the mole. And I'll have you come back with a lot more uh, fluid containers as well. Oh, there it is. Perfect. And this is way less than a stack. Good. Yeah, so we're not making room for some of these resources. I'm surprised I caught it in time, actually. Uh, it looks like I didn't really catch it in time, actually. Okay. Uh, we just need to add industrial furnace. Do we have a beacon here somewhere? We actually have no beacons. Alright. Industrial furnace. Request a chest. Uh, active provider, I guess. No. Passive provider. No. We need to turn it immediately into copper cable. Okay. Spiders are a few minutes away. I'm getting a little bit concerned about our antimatter stream. But on the other hand, the storage for the antimatter stream in one ship is very, very high. So this will be able to catch up relatively quickly. I got my saved game from my laptop that is unplayable because my laptop can't handle ONI late game. Cycle 600, it feels good, I can continue my game on my new desktop. Nice. The hole for coal mining doesn't run dry, but they are scattered randomly. This makes logistics a bit more difficult. Yeah, a bit more of a nuisance is how I would put it. I set up 8 coal, mine, coal mines on a world earlier today for 13 cores a second. How much area do you have to cover 
to start getting deep into the diminishing returns, that's what I want to know. T-hacks, well, you just plan for that from the start, that's why I said earlier, it takes much more planning. Yeah, I mean, it, it's whether or not it's a train stop away or not, um, we're still going to have, like, don't push our freshly produced negative 10 degree thermofluid into here if we've got thermofluid here, for example. In fact, that would be a better way to do this. Um, what is that connected to? Nothing. Yeah, this one's unconditional. And this one is a cool thermofluid greater than a small amount. Wait, no, that's backwards. Less than a small amount. In fact, make sure it's empty. Only when this is empty do we want to pump this into here. Okay. One. Two. Three. And get rid of the extra wires. Oh. Oh, that was connected to the train stop, not the... Wait, that was connected to the... Was that not connected to the train stop? That's a pretty important thing to notice. Uh, I guess I changed them all so I don't... Yeah, no, it was never connected to the train stop. Okay, good to know. Alright, so let's check these. Uh, one, two... One... Two... One... Two... And... One, two... The fact that all of a sudden we've got a train coming to pick up cool thermofluid um, tells me that, yeah, that was definitely not working before. Good thing we caught it. Kinda lucky. You need 20 cores to work one crusher? T-hacks will you just plan from... oh yes, yes. One thing that is no longer possible is to land on a bite of planet, landfill an island they can't get to, and build all core miners there. Now you'll have to fight. I would never do that. Not in a million years would I do that even once. Nope. Okay, we're here. Let me just catch up with the chat real quick. Undead Hunter, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Needs to smash harder? Uh, okay. Suspect I'll need two to three planets per core type in point six, so I'll need three by sixteen core worlds. A lot of surfaces here. Yeah. Is the one to landfill recipe... Is the ore to landfill recipe K2 or SE? Uh, I'm pretty sure K uh, SE includes it. But then you've just got a different resource that you're that you have to stack away somewhere until the end of time. I guess hmm. I guess I should have used that for no wait, you can't you can't delivery cannon landfill. Unless No, you can't delivery cannon landfill. So there's no way to get rid of it automatically. Is the ore to landfill recipe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can landfill one... You can landfill ore in regular SE. Yes, indeed. Iridite pile driver versus a chest is the best solution. What if you don't need to get rid of iridite, though? Core fragment processing is actually a perfect example of this. Those facilities can be fully self-contained. 
and if there's a tiny amount of byproduct after productivity tuning that can get trashed, core fragments are infinite after all. Yes. Trashed how in SE? Uh, this thing that we're fixing in a minute. Oh, the spiders are just arriving, actually. So the problem with this is it's a super... I'm using the same train station to request stuff we need here with stuff that we're trying to get rid of. Um, but since we've got a ton of copper... Uh, let's go... Let's just fill this with copper ore. Why not? And modules... Uh, may as well productivity it. Modules. Oh, actually, we could get even better productivity if we used Vulcanite as well. In which case, we may as well do the Iridium thing. But no, let's just let's just do this the old-fashioned way. And copper cables as well. And I kind of wish I had one of the old beacons right now, to be honest. Uh, we don't have one of the old beacons, do we? No. Uh, but yeah, now that we've got copper cable, we can make delivery cannon capsules, which we can put into here so that we can destroy... Uh, whatever it is that we are, that we've got too much of. Um, this is too slow though. Fine, we'll beacon it. It's not like we have a shortage of power. go. Is that going to be too fast for the inserters? Uh, yes. This one will swing less often, so that'll be the tiniest of UPS savings. Alright. Now we're cooking. Because we need a bunch of these to fire at the same time. I think we need literally all of them to fire at the same time in order to destroy these chests for double plus bonus get rid of stuff. We should probably put the landfill in here. Yeah, that would be a good way to do it. Well, I'm not going to redesign that on this playthrough. Maybe next time. If there isn't a better sink for excess resources. Or maybe I'll just... Maybe I will. I, I, I think this is going to be ludicrous. Um, but I want to see... I, I wanted to run the experiment. I want to see what this actually looks like. Uh, next playthrough, we're not going to destroy items, at least at first. Uh, we're just going to keep adding storage blocks. Whenever we get too full on a resource that it stops core fragment processing, we're just going to add another storage block. And we'll see what that looks like after however many hours. Alright, so the clamp ID for this, I was going to use, I think it's 223 is the Nexus item ID. And down here. Oh, right. I need to manually land first. Uh, where did I put... Here it is. It might be a little bit tricky to manually anchor this thing. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be tricky. I can't even really see the... Uh... Spaceship clamp. Do we have something I could use as a guide? Yeah, sure. 
why not? A couple of... Where's the clamp? Here it is. A couple of these. And... Uh, let's see. Two, four, six, eight, nine... Two, four, six, seven. Seven tiles below the clamp. On the edge here. Uh, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, we did it. Okay. So this is going to have the same clamp ID. Uh, let's go with using left clamp, two, two, three, anchor to right clamp, two, two, three. So this ship will come here automatically next time. We've got just a bit more heat than we need to get back to Nalvis orbit. Um, so this will be unnecessary, uh, but I would like to do it anyway. And is there any reason for this ship to stay here for any length of time? Other than to get some heat? I don't really think so. It's going to be consuming power while we're here as well. I think we'll just set up... Honestly, I think we'll just unconditionally tell this thing to launch straight away. So we're going to go red wire... Red wire to the console. Uh... What is it? Orbit 315? Orbit 317. I think 315 is the planet. No, 316. Orbit 317. Planet Orbit 317. Destination Novice Orbit. And... Launch. And away we go. Why are we not launching? Oh, we are launching. Alright, cool. Literally, that's all we need at this end. And since we have more than 7.5k, we should expect to get back to Nalvis without any trouble. And it looks like we'll have about... Uh, almost 1,500 data cards by the time we get back there. Admittedly, my last plays were K2SE. Okay. The formula for diminishing return is the same, but the overall performance of core miner is higher. Oh. So you need fewer core miners to get the same thing, but you need to find where to put them. You get more core, uh, cores per mine now. Overall, 0.6 is a buff to the core miner. Seems good. Is it still the same 50 megawatts, or is it about the same power ratio? It was about 60 to 100 cores a second before 0.6, now 13. 13 with change for beryl and iridite. Now 13? Or is it like 130? Plus, the core miners take less power, but you have to place them on a core seam. So I estimate three worlds to get back to how it was. You just stuff the landfill into a warehouse and then bombard it. Yeah, that would be a better way to do it. 
I don't think I want to go to the trouble of changing it this time though. We're getting close to the end. If I were to go back and like optimize all the things that I've moved on from a certain design for, we'd be here for another thousand hours. With K2 you can void landfill on land with the crusher, but not in space. I'm too tired. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh my god, destroying Iridite. Hilarious. After the comment, why waste Iridite pile driver? Well, currently we're saturated on Iridite. Bottlenecks do be shifting. Do the non logy chests also cost UPS? Uh, it depends what you're doing with them. You could leave an energy beam on a power switch that flicks on every 60 seconds for 10 seconds. That is true. However, you would have to get to energy beaming before you can void any resources. Well, there's ways to, view, to void certain resources, but you know what I mean. Would need logic to empty out all the bots on the loop. Yeah, that's pretty easy, actually. That sounds fun. 25 megawatts. 13 cores, iridite cores were made harder. Oh. Per core miner and the roof pyroflux into steam recipe offsets it further. Okay. Um, yeah, here's how we do... Here's how we check if bots are in flight. Um, we've got... We've changed available logistic bots and total logistic bots to XY. Construction bots... Oh, this is actually the default signals, if I recall correctly. I'm not sure. Uh, but we've got XYZT. X minus Y equals logistic bot. Uh, Z minus T equals construction bot. So if this is zero, we know that the bots are not moving right now. Vita seems way better cause than 0.5, though you need a truckload of Vita. That's true. Once you get to, uh, looks like we're catching up with this. Oh, no, we do. Wait, what? Oh, we have machines for making, uh, copper cable already. So I can actually just... Damn it, I think I made my spiders go away. Uh, all the way back to the mall, actually. Let's just make them pay a visit over there. Well, it's working anyway. Although, we don't seem to be fast enough with our delivery cannon capsules. Oh, there's no explosives? Hmm. Do we have enough trains? We do. I'm pretty sure we're saturated on explosives. Yeah, we are. So, why would we be out of... Explosives over here? Or is there a train bringing explosives right now? There is not. What's our train limit? Only four. Well, there's your problem. That's going to temporarily create a bit more traffic than we're comfortable with, but it'll sort itself out. Also, on another playthrough, I might seriously consider putting delivery cannon capsules into the rail network. In fact, I think that would probably be a good idea. We've made it locally in so many different places. Especially considering the default recipe requires four inputs. Temperature 7.5k.
I think we're gonna get about what? 13, 1400 interstellar travel data by the time we get back. Very cool. Deep Space Science Pack 4 is going to be a while though before we can actually make use of that. Uh, we are getting products finished for reality hypergraph analysis data. That's nice. Oh, we've got quite a lot actually. Wow. When it rains, it pours. Uh, I guess it's not too shocking, considering considering one Naquium processor makes 50. Uh, and we've set this up to request 160 at a time. Oh, it's literally one train becomes one train. Yeah, one train of Naquium processors becomes one train of reality hypergraph analysis data. So we've definitely... that looks cool. We've definitely got a train load of uh, reality hypergraph analysis data on the way already. Uh, Naquim cubes. Two Naquim cube makes four teleportation data, so that's definitely requiring going to require more than train load of cubes. We do have our singularity data at least. Uh, the other stuff is also looking for cubes. There's just never enough Naquitite. DSS4 seems broken. 1000 seconds crafting time. Wait, which one was that? The uh, 50 data cards though? Yeah, it's 50 data cards, so... Uh, what is that? 20... 20 seconds for one data card. That's still kind of slow. Also, we're not keeping up with the Crynite Rod input. Wait, what? It's right here. Oh, it's not putting it in yet because... reasons? It should put it in. Why does it do that? Hmm. I could... I was going to say I could replace this with a stack inserter and set it to a stack size of 10. Uh, but what I can do instead is just set it to stack size 2. And if we're on an even number, which we are, it's going to... Wait a sec. We've got 101 blank data cards in here. But this one stopped at 99 when we need 100 cryonite. With two stacks of blank data card here, one stack goes... There's only 80 in here, why are you not swinging? Since when does it do this? Alright, let's bring our construction spiders into it. And we're going to replace this with a stack inserter. We're going to set it to stack size 10. And we're going to hope that... that that's going to be close enough to a fix. Blue inserter has the blues? Yeah. That's still pretty slow. I mean, we're not going to keep up with the input for a while, so I don't need to double it or anything. I reckon if you do a space scaffold decon on all the unused space scaffolds, you'd gain UPS. Uh, I have my doubts about that, but we could try it. How full are these guys? Not very. How much would we have to cut away before we before we can say we should see an improvement by now. Blue Lightning DT, thank you very much for the seven months. Much appreciated, thank you. Stops because the output is full, apparently. Yeah, but normally it tries to put in, like, two extra recipes of stuff. 
does that mean if I if I make this a stack inserter? Uh, so it's going to put in cryonite rods while this recipe is running and this is empty. Is it going to go to 200 cryonite rods if it's fast enough? I'm guessing that's the way it works. It might be that the output isn't fast enough for the loader. The loader won't add more till it's empty. Uh, sort of. But we shouldn't have to... Yeah, I'm guessing... I'm guessing it'll stop putting in at like 60 or 66 or something. Yeah, so we just need the stack inserter to get this to 100 before the recipe completes. Okay, and that's with all speed modules. Jeez. Slow recipe. If output is full, it does not overfill the input. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't even sufficiently fill the input is the problem. Asandanima, welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Odd is Phillips, welcome, welcome, also. Prowling Wolves, welcome. Uh, did I miss anything in the chat? No, I think we're good. Thank you very much again, uh, Blue Lightning. Much appreciated. Alright, we got a stack inserter. We're gonna go... I guess we don't have to worry about the stack size. It's going to get to 100 before this recipe completes, is the main thing. Yep. And it is, in fact, going for 200. Okay. We shouldn't have needed a stack inserter for that, but it's an easy fix. How do we still have excess blank data cards here? Okay, we've only got 5,000. We are requesting... Uh, oh, that's why. We, we should just request a little bit more than one train load. Otherwise trains are going to come here for blank data cards. Alright, so we're back to wishing we had more Nacrotite, I guess, so that we can finish Deep Space Science Pack 4, um, and so that we can actually get the data cards. I haven't actually done... oh, that's right. Uh, Catalog 3 just happens here. We didn't build a block for it or anything. Probably Catalog 4 will be the same-ish. Uh, let's see. Teleportation, wormhole, interstellar travel, reality hypergraph. Uh, we were already putting this into the rail network, so I decided to put these two into the rail network. And interstellar travel data will also be in the rail network. But I kind of missed an opportunity to not have to bother with that. Did I lower the... yeah, I did. This is low priority. This is the last place antimatter comes. Uh, I think... I think we'll just use this spot here, actually. Okay. Probably about time for... Oh, what's this? Antimatter stream is coming to the low priority drop-off. Wait, is that because our antimatter boat can't move? I think it is. Uh, I need to fix that before I take a break. Very important. Where's our... 
spaceship builder. Did you get... Yes, you did. Uh, definitely something to bear in mind on a future playthrough as well is... Well, I was going to say I would like to keep all of the spaceship landing spots like around the edge of uh, of the factory so that I don't have to think about where the spiders have to walk in future. But for one thing, none of these are going to be necessary because of the space elevator. And for another thing, um, I think in the orbital base I would like to do more of spaceship lands in the middle of the block that has things relevant to it. Okay. But we just need to build this... Uh, do I still have it on copy-paste somewhere? I think I do. No, that seems... Oh, it was a blueprint. Was it in my personal... Yeah, yeah, here we go. I've actually got two of them. I went to do this twice at some point. Uh, as soon as we can build this ship, it'll... I was going to say it'll auto-take off, but it doesn't have enough antimatter stream. So we're going to just temporarily turn this around. And as soon as it's able to take off, we'll turn those pumps around again. Alright, is this thing working? Oh. Oh yes. Wait, how did we suddenly get so many delivery cannon capsules? That was way faster than I thought it would be. Well, here it goes. Kaboom. And that's how we void some resources. So that we can continue core mining. So that this doesn't happen. It'll take a while to sort itself out. But we're not struggling on resources. Sort of. Because everything is bottlenecked. Everything we're trying to do right now is bottlenecked on Naquitite. Really. Um, we're not doing much of other things. I think. Let's see. Science pack. Yeah, uh, can I just stop? How do I show all again? Reset? There we go. Uh, we actually have been making some of the other types of science pack. Only 1.5 hours ago, actually, never mind. So we're all saturated on most things. Because Nequitite is so slow, we're bottlenecked on that. Um, our resources from the core mining missing for a bit isn't actually as painful as it normally would be. And the biters kill your stuff. You can train junk to a biter nest and put a radar in the middle of storage chests. Yeah, that... Having a carefully managed like, defensive wall that allows the biters to kill certain things but not others. I guess that works. So it was the biters all along. They're, they're, they're actually here to help. Feed them junk, that's why they mad. 
Have we just not been taking care of our biters properly? Alright, what about that spaceship? Uh, blueprint... Go. I do wish it would let you, like, do a blueprint like this in one go, despite the spaceship flaws. Oh, you don't have any of that fancy stuff. Oh no, I didn't think of that. Anti, there's no... Alright, we're just going to have to remove this. Pump that away. We'll need to build this thing in space. Oh, I can just do this, can't I? Then remove this stuff. As soon as that's gone, we'll probably... Well, we may or may not immediately have our... You haven't launched yet. Well, you're getting very, very close to launching. Greater than 49,500. As soon as this one tank reaches 49,500, it's going to launch. Maybe I should lower that, especially if we're going to have a second ship for this. If we've got Antimatter Stream getting to a low priority uh, drop off. And we've got ships waiting for antimatter down here. We should definitely not be as strict with how full this has to be. And back, have you won yet? Uh, let me check. No. All right, let's add. Can I actually just line this up conveniently? I cannot. Alright. We're gonna put this down here. This here. Yeah, we'll we'll have the ships um launch a little bit earlier and we'll have two of them. That'll be a lot better for the throughput of antimatter stream. Change pumps? Uh, these aren't going anywhere. Oh, I, I, yeah, the pumps on the ground. I think I did do that already. Yep, we're good. Okay. It will cost us a little more antimatter stream to move the antimatter stream around by launching that little bit earlier. Um, but it's going to be higher throughput. Which is maybe what we need at this stage. We also need significantly more antimatter booster tanks. We have 34 here, so it should just be... What's this train looking for? Not booster tanks. It should just be a matter of time before that gets delivered. There's too many things this station is being used for. I should probably do something about that. If I make another one of this one though, there's a problem with doubling up on the same resource because it's coming from the logistic network. Antimatter stream on Twitch stream, mind blown. Indeed. Uh, let's see, 6.7k heat remaining, that's like 1700 that we can actually use. Distance is 33k. Or for a more visceral look at it, we are not exactly halfway back from Stardust to Calidus because a lot of the distance is hidden in here. But I'm pretty sure we're making it back. Uh, 
if we do squeak back into Calidus and actually run out of heat here somewhere, uh, then the solar panels would get us back. We could also, if we had a buffer, yeah, if we had a buffer for steam, we could uh, slow ourselves down. Like, the Nexus uses more power the faster you're going. Will it actually use the same amount of power overall, over a certain distance, or does going slower make it more efficient? Power efficient, that is. Who knows? Alright, I think it's about time though for a little break. Let's get some words on the stream. And. And Veldek goes yay. I'll just double check. I'm pretty sure I don't have to change this, but make sure that URL is correct. All right, so I'll also save it while we're doing this. So 30 seconds, we're gonna start some words on stream. I'll be back in a few minutes. Fantastic.
Fantastic. My chair is dying. That is not so fantastic. Let's continue with some space exploration. How far out are we from Navis Orbit? Uh, seven minutes. We've still got 1400 heat that we can use. I think we're going to make it. I mean, I've said this over and over, but it's it's going to be a bit close. What is Construction Ship 4 doing? Uh, 
What? What? Huh? So it's run out of heat somehow. Oh, the water's too full. How did that happen? Well, we can fix that pretty easily. Uh, let me just figure out the best place. I think it has to be up here. With picker dollies. I'm going to remove like 300 water. And... Actually, I... Hmm... I don't see water being... S it looks like water is too full everywhere, but the output here isn't full, which is weird. Um, and this should give us the, the water, that, the heat... Sorry, the energy from the condenser turbines that we need just to swing these inserters. that we can put nuclear fuel back in. Oh, wait, what? There's no fuel in there. How did... What? Uh... I am very confused as to how... How we ended up with zero fuel cells in here, like used or otherwise. That's pretty strange. The way this works normally is when accumulator charge is low enough, we're allowed to take the used up uranium fuel cells out. When we take out the uranium fuel cells, we put in one more. Um... And this ship has been working just fine for ages. I don't know how it got here. I also don't know how we ended up with 25k water in all of these. That's very strange. Greater than zero? Yeah. Used up uranium fuel cell greater than zero. And these ones read hand contents. So when we take out a fuel cell, we put in a fuel cell. That way we can be sure of just putting in one more when we need it. Hmm. You're moving, that's fine. Well, I'll just have to pay that one a visit. Uh, it really is a mystery as to how it stopped. Hmm. Well, that's one more point against these reactors. Own beat. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Passion sausage. Good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Crazy Heather. And I think I already said hello to Fries and Peter. Thank you for the follow as well. Own beat. Alright, so what else were we doing while that was happening? We were about to do a build for um, catalogs. We need a deep supercomputer. My spiders aren't carrying those, but we can put a ghost down at least. Uh, deep supercomputer, four types of travel data, uh, of data rather, and cryonite rod. I'm really feeling like I should just use this area here, since we've got all of those things in one place already. Um, except for the interstellar travel data, which we can have delivered. I guess the blank 
data cards are getting stolen now. That's probably fine. So then all we actually need to do is a drop-off station for interstellar travel data. There's only two uses for it. One is what we're doing now, and the other is literally to end the game. So we don't need to worry about it going anywhere else. And I guess I'll put the station in the usual spot. So we're going to do a provider station for uh, for here for catalogs. Money long long nose. Okay then. Oh wait, I forgot to do this first. And a request a station here. Uh, and we're looking for interstellar travel data. You know, if our ship comes back here, which it will, it's actually automatically already going to return the interstellar travel data to the mall. And from there, a short train could bring it over here. But we've already got way too much traffic all the time at this little station, so I think I would rather try to set up something a bit more deliberate. Do we have any room left over here, though? Kind of. Uh, I'm thinking we could have... A pickup station right about here, actually. There's not quite enough room. So we need to send the construction spiders back this way first. I want to make sure we get this done before the ship arrives. Do you know Timmy Trumpet? He was playing at Czech Republic at EDM Festival last weekend. I was waiting for the punchline because you used the word Czech again. And no, I do not. Uh, Silent Storm, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I'm pretty sure the scaffolding costs us nothing, UPS-wise, but we will run that experiment. Will we, though? What if I want to build something up here? Also, I haven't actually sent these guys back to the mall yet. What's our ETA? Four minutes. Uh, is that enough time? I think it is. And then I can bring the deep supercomputer down here. We can just do a short train on each side for this. Okay, anything else in the meantime? We can remove this old stuff. T 
Timmy Trumpets Australian. Today I learned. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, I remember we had a bit of a crisis with storing cool thermofluid at one point. Good to know that that's not actually an issue down here. Be probably because of that block. Also, we've got one for bio sludge, and it's actually almost completely full. Kind of overkill much? There is no overkill, there is only open fire and I need to reload. Throws hands in air. <laughs> it's fine. Alright, I think the spiders are going to get there in time. Yep, definitely. We need some scaffolding right about here. Why are we not like this thing? That bio sludge will soon develop its own basic intelligent intelligence in a small civilization. Yes. Oh, we already had scaffolding here. I wouldn't be surprised if I didn't actually need to bring the spiders here for this. Do we have a train stop? Yes, we do. Whoops. And then we're just going to put a requester chest. Uh... Hmm... Could we make this a passive provider? My fear is... Actually, no, let's... Let's just whitelist... Uh, I need a constant combinator here for this little exception to the rule. Uh, we're going to whitelist interstellar travel data. In this place. So that's not going to get brought to this requester chest. And then we just request... Uh, Interstellar travel data, full chest, and go. Uh, and this is interstellar travel data, either. Very, very simple. That's actually the entire station, uh, and we don't need anything else, actually. Well, I could have solved that without bringing the spiders over. Whoops. That feel when you start Factorio and there's 25 mod updates ready to install. Yes, indeed. That'll be fine. Right. And here we go. Still two and a half minutes. Until we reach our destination. Uh, Naquatite is in motion. Good to see. We're having some difficulty keeping up. Oh, we should definitely... What can we fit here? Four train loads, and we're only allowing one train at a time. Alright, that could probably be improved. Not that I thought we would need to move antimatter to stream that quickly. In fact, maybe... Not maybe, I think I should... I think I should have another antimatter stream pickup point over here. Uh, so this station. We can 
no, no. Do the same thing here. Too close to existing rail signal. Okay, there we go. Turn this around. Uh, we need to make a little bit more of a change than usual here. Well, no, we don't. Actually. Um, if I just copy this here, ship builder should be able to manage that. And we're going to copy the plant IDs. Just have to change some of this piping a little bit. Uh, let's see. That needs to be one tile up. And that doesn't reach anymore. Rip. And turn that around. Turn that around. That is good. Oh yeah, we were trying to make another one of these ships, weren't we? It is done. And it's already filling with antimatter stream. Uh, I think I would like to get it moving already. Empty... Anti-matter tanker two. That should be called a tanker. Or wait, what's my other? What's my naming convention for the shuttles? Tanker. Yeah. Okay. Not that we would have had trouble finding it. Antimatter stream goes here. And go to Nalvis, please. Did you run out of empty data cards? No, not even close. We've got uh, almost a thousand left. Uh, that said, we've actually exceeded my estimate of how much interstellar travel data we'd get, although not by much. We're almost home. One minute, actually. Alright, so... And Antimatter tanker number two. Oh, I have to tell it engage as well the first time. And it should just automatically land at our new block. Three, two, one, and... And go. Fantastic. Uh, so we just need to make this pipe reach. Could I do it with fewer pipe segments? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. No, we couldn't. Uh, it'll be six, but yeah, we couldn't do better than that, actually. Actually, let me just leave that there. Put this here. That might be a bit more consistent. Um, I just realized the construction spider here doesn't have any pipe. All right. Uh, you back to the ball, please. Uh, 
and we'll be able to move this stuff twice as fast now. Actually, maybe it's fine to have the really strict uh, amount of fluid for takeoff up here. Because it's going to immediately be swapped out for another ship. It's fine. Alright. Are we back yet? 15 seconds. Beautiful. Construction spiders have arrived. Um, so that recipe is... Four types of data card plus cryonite rod. We're just going to do a request a chest. Up here. Massive provider here. Request a chest here. Interstellar. Reality hypergraph. Teleportation and wormhole. Wait, we don't have teleportation? Oh yeah, we haven't done this yet. We need Naquim cubes and time space anomaly data. Maybe I should just get rid of the storages for these. Doesn't really matter with reality hypergraph because we're going to get a train load of that at a time anyway. Actually, that's not true anymore because this is all one logistic network. Looking forward to the naming of ships in my point six playthrough. I somehow ended up with the tradition of starting all names with Ra. My mining ships were generally named for tools. So Rake, Rasp, Ratchet. The Nexus ship was Ragnarok. And my personal yacht and favourite was Ravioli. <laughs> nice. Uh, are we okay here? What's... What, what's the problem? Oh, it's still pumping. Pumping speed 23, 24. That's weird. It normally just takes a second. Oh. Cold thermo fluid greater than... Z Wait, what? Hold on. These ones up here are all not connected, right? It's a little bit hard to see, but yeah. I've never seen this happen before. Provide threshold 100k. There had to be 100k thermofluid here before the train would come. Very strange. Greater than or equal to 100k. Well, away it goes, I guess. That was weird. We are here. And so is our interstellar travel data. Uh, I actually need to set a lower threshold pick up here. Uh, since we've got, what is this, 29 stacks. Let's just say 20 stacks, why not? And short trains only, actually. So we should have a train coming to pick this up quite soon. Uh, we will wait till this is at 10,000 again before we launch it. I 
wish there was some way to measure the heat, but what can you do? Um, I might just put a constant combinator here. Oh, that's the output. There we go. Um, and we're going to say spaceship launch. Oh, destination. Stardust is asteroid field 1106. Whoops. And spaceship launch. So for now, I'm just going to flick that on when this thing reaches 10k. Until I think of something better. We can easily check... Well, I guess with the wiring it's a little trickier. We can piggyback off of the accumulators, actually. We can easily check if there's antimatter stream and water. But we don't have a way to check if there's heat. We could add a timer. But first I have to figure out exactly how long it has to be here to reach maximum temperature. And for that I should probably start the timer uh, the moment it arrives. one I'll just do this manually uh, if T not equal to zero output T input count all right we're just gonna start that when the ship comes back next time uh, actually no I can I can do it this way. Um, decider combinator. If anything greater than, if anything not equal to zero, output T1. So the moment the ship gets here, the timer is going to start. And I can just reset the timer manually. We'll do that after another round trip. Okay. Uh, spider. Remote. And go. I need to bring this uh, deep supercomputer down. Also, I should probably... Where is the junk data card processing? Good question. Also, what is this? Petroleum. Uh, junk data card processing. I thought it was in the middle somewhere. I'm actually kind of confused. Oh, nope, that's not it. Okay, I'm actually very confused. I was sure... It was... Here it is. Okay. Uh, maybe I could just replace these ones with some deep supercomputers. And don't worry about the throughput. Especially since we're empty on junk data cards for now. Um, we should have like three down here. Because I was limiting them. Indeed we do. Uh, 
so I think I'll actually just get rid of most of these. This would require eight if I was gonna do. I'm, I'm just gonna put a couple there. Wait, we've got no motion here for now. not going to mess with anything, is it? We're just going to use these two, actually. Get rid of all of that for now. Instead of efficient, we're going all the way to deep data formatting. And the input outputs. Oh, we need cryonite as well now. Uh, um, maybe I'll just... This is actually... This block is basically empty. I might just take this opportunity to redesign it. Okay. I'm just going to switch this off for the moment. And hope we don't need it too soon. Let's bring our construction spiders over. I don't think we need them for... We, we literally just have to put down a supercomputer and stuff. So let's bring them back to here. Also, I'm curious as to how many Arcospheres we got. The Arcosphere Ferry is on its way back right now, actually. So we can get a good idea. Um, if it was one to one, we would have got 40 Arcospheres in the last however long. Uh, kind of hard to tell. I'm, I'm guessing each of those bumps is one Arcosphere. That would be five. How much is in the ship? That would be a better way to check. It is literally just five. Five Arcospheres for all that. It seems like we've always got some... Oh my goodness. Uh, it seems like we're... No, we still need more Arcospheres if we're going to always be able to do what we need. Okay. More faster spheres? Yes, indeed. Aquium cubes are in motion. Good to see. What's our production like for Naquitite over the last... Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, I guess that's about what I expect. That is so spiky. Thanks for the stream. Take care, Whiskers. Thanks for hanging out. All right, um, so I'm pretty sure we're just bottlenecked on antimatter stream for all these ships. 
And I'm pretty sure we're catching up to that already. I think it was definitely the right choice to add at least one more ship uh, to move antimatter stream. I doubt we need a third, but it wouldn't hurt, I suppose. Alright, so what's this recipe? Extended uh, data. I mean, catalog. But we also need negative 273 degree thermofluid again. And it outputs as 25. We've got that here. Let's just borrow this. My base is getting more and more spaghetti towards the end, but all of this stuff is so low throughput, it's kind of almost the only way to do it. Three, four, five. Why do I have 500 regular uh, pipes? Space pipes. I don't want the bots taking them just yet. Uh, that should be a stack, I think. This is... Uh, maybe I could just put this right next to... here, actually. Whoops. Uh, that is one off. How long is this recipe? 90 seconds. Long arm go. Ninety seconds though. That do be kinda slow. I guess I could squeeze this through here. Five, six. And four. I guess we could go a five here. Okay, so we got our fluid, uh, interstellar travel data, I haven't done the request for it yet. Twenty stacks, short trains only. One full chest. And go. And just for the sake of it. Actually, no, there's no need. It could be a steel chest. Okay. Oh, and uh, tell LTN what we've got here. So this is catalog provider. Uh, provide stack threshold. Probably something a bit lower than usual, to say the least. Where are we doing? Over here. Uh, I didn't set it up to allow short trains. I want to keep this balanced. Okay, fine. 
We'll do this. just set it so that I don't know we'll set it really low for starters four stacks what is the default train limit I wonder if just not leaving a signal there means it's unlimited all right, here comes our interstellar travel data. Very nice. I guess with one stack inserter, it kind of takes a while to load, but it's not like we're not going to keep up with it. Oh, we're already at 10,000 again. Okay. There's no way I can, like, detect when this is 10,000. That's why we're doing this timer. So I have to pay attention to this when it comes back. Uh, I guess we are launching. And go. And go. It seems to take longer to launch a bigger ship. I think it spreads out the calculations, um, so it doesn't just, like, freeze the game for a second. Okay, so we've got our timer set up. As soon as a ship is detected, the timer is going to start. And then the moment we see it at 10,000 degrees, plus all of the high temp heat exchanges at 10,000 degrees, we can assume that's how many ticks it takes. Nope, I am not here. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think I need emotional support. I'm currently rebuilding Bioscience 1 and forgot how many fluids there were. Uh, we're here for you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's some scary stuff. Okay. Uh, so interstellar travel is literally on its way. That just leaves teleportation data. Teleportation data is still waiting on Naquium cubes and time-space anomaly data. Naquium cubes are requested from a buffer chest here. Um, but this is a requester chest that requests from buffer chests. So that's not going to cut it. Uh, I might just bump that down to like 8 in that case. These two should be fine. So we can at least get a trickle of this once we get even more Naquim cubes um, delivered up here. There's at least a couple of places that are dependent on this, so I'm going to crank up the priority. Don't let the neural gel outsmart you, indeed. There's an unpowered water pump feeding the Nexus ship. Uh, is there? There might have been. Uh, it'll be fine for this trip. It's got plenty of power. Actually, it should have been powered while the Nexus ship was here. Its goal is 12k. Where is our Nexus ship? Oh, it's already out here. Yeah, I forgot. It's fast. Um, our goal is like 12k. What the? 20? Well, we've got more water than we're supposed to have. In any case. 
Um, but yeah, it the pump should be powered by this substation pylon. And we do have the solar panels here, and even if we didn't, we've got the wire connection from the clamp. So it shouldn't make a difference. Boop. Goes the shield. Okay. Actually... I have an idea as to how we could automate launching the ship. We could have two conditions, a certain amount of, oh, I guess I'm doing this anyway, actually. Because I was going to say we could just launch the ship when there's no data cards here. Uh, but then it might, it'll probably land here and then immediately launch. So we'd have to put a little timer on it to make sure that the bots have time to deliver data cards here. If we're going to do that, we may as well have the timer take as long as it needs to, um, to actually uh, get the heat into the ship as well. So this is just going to... Not that we're going to be saturated. Actually, we might, considering how slow the other stuff is. Because um, interstellar travel data is not actually dependent on Naquatite at all. Um, so we're going to end up with that saturated. So we're going to have the timer condition, and also this has to equal zero. We'll add a pylon right about here. Get rid of some of those extra wires. They are terribly messy. What is this one doing here? No, oh, that's fine, actually. Not that it matters. All right. So, that shouldn't be connected over here, either. Why doesn't this connect? Maximum of five. Okay. Uh, so we are going to read from this. We've got our timer up here. We're going to have two decider combinators. T has to be greater than X, and um, T has to be greater than X. Data card has to equal zero. going to set that ludicrously high for now. Data card equals zero. And then if two green signals output spaceship launch And we're always going to give it the destination. Let's just check that's connected properly. Yep. All right. So that goes there. That goes there. And these two go here. Doing all of that in another city block ain't going to fuck with all... Oh, I see. Okay. Here come some Arcospheres. A whopping five of them. I 
I forgot how slow this is. Not that it matters. And here is our interstellar travel data. So we are just waiting on teleportation data before we get our tier 4 catalogs. Uh, and we're also still waiting on way too much Naquitite to get to unlock Deep Space Science Pack 4. Naquium Tesseract. It's always Naquium Cubes. That's our production. comes in waves, which we know that, but 81.82 per minute over the last 10 hours, significantly more than that in the last 10 minutes, way slower than that in the last hour, still catching up with the antimatter stream situation. Wait, we've got Naquitite here. Oh, that's a really good sign. Yeah, that's a lot of Naquitite. Very good. Very good. I want to move that tree. It keeps confusing me. There we go. Yeah, we've actually got consistent ingot production right now. Looks like last 10 minutes, very, very consistent. We just reached the peak 10 minutes ago. Uh, and hopefully it'll stay that way from now on. We've got... many ships in motion. This one is... this one has no destination. What? Oh no. Well, that would probably help. Glad I checked them all. Stardust, 15, 16... Oh, we've got a new ship that we haven't launched yet as well. Stardust. Off you go. And it is in motion. Plastic. If we have a single ship waiting its turn at Nalvis, we do not, uh, then I'd be very confident about our Naquitite flow for the next while. But yeah, considering how saturated this is, um, that's actually looking really good. Also got another oh no, never mind, it's leaving. Uh we got a couple of Stardust ships coming in as well. And a lot of them leaving. Uh yeah. You can you can kinda tell when we fixed the antimatter throughput. Okay, uh, so that's all going pretty well. Uh, what are we doing besides the waiting game then? We need more supercomputers if we want... Oh, that's right, we were going to redesign this block. 
is a really good opportunity to do that. We're not going to need anywhere near as many deep supercomputers. Oh, they only have four. Oh, I see what happened here. Because I upgraded them. Uh, okay. This thing, actually. Deep supercomputer. All of the speed modules. Go. We also haven't used any beacons in this build. Alright, let's just... I don't care about this amount of cold thermo fluid. Oh, also, it needs to be super cold. We've got so much, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna empty this. Negative 273. That's not what I meant to do. We need more than 273. 273. Okay. Uh, so, if we have a bacon... Uh, we're going to need a different ratio of efficiencies if we want minimum power consumption, but do we even want to bother with that at this point? 80 megawatts each, though. We have, like, 60 gigawatts to spare, depending on what we're doing. Um, yeah, that... Well, that a gigawatt would only support 12 of these machines, though. And that's with these efficiency modules. Um, I'm not actually carrying any, like, efficiency nines or anything. Can we delete that blueprint? There we go. Um, but yeah, I am wondering... I'm, I'm thinking we don't need as many deep supercomputers, not even close, to keep up with this. So this is broken data cards. We can use up 22 per second. That's not a whole lot. Um, that's if we don't upgrade the speed modules. In fact, why don't I just abandon the notion that we're going to keep this as is? Just read the changelog for point six. What do you like about it or dislike? I'll leave that there for now. So we need Cryonite plus Junk Data Card. Well, first of all, let's build the recycling facilities down here around beacons. Broken Data Card becomes Scrap. And the usual beacon, I think. Have you ever left your home planet and have more than a handful of processing anywhere? Forget upgrading. I'm not sure if I understand the question. That's plus... Oh, we don't have power. Okay. Uh, minus 80%. Plus 200%. Okay. Wait. Alright, so this is as fast as it goes for minimum power consumption. 1.25 broken dot cards per second. Let's just see what it looks like. Um, I don't think... It's weird that we can rotate them. It, it's pretending there's fluid input, but there isn't. Uh, yeah, if we do this... 
that's actually kind of in the way. Oh, we're going to have what fluid for output? 25 degrees. Okay, cool. Uh, milk and pesto. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We don't have to be married to this fluid pipe right here. Um, but I don't think we need to remove it. Let's suppose this is what we're going with. We've got 32 machines. Uh, that can do 40 broken data cards per second. And 200 scrap, that's actually more than four belts. Okay. What's the individual rate? Uh, 6.25 per second, that's fine. We'd probably have to add some extra belt uh, to make the inserters actually saturate four belts, though. Something like this. And we probably, probably want to run it through a balancer. How big's the corner one? Uh, that is a 4 to 4. We don't have to worry about lane balancing because we're going to be picking up everything. So if I move this up four tiles... No, we're going to have to move the pylon substation. Also, what is this station for? Oh, it's for broken data cards that come from somewhere else. I don't remember where else we would be getting them, but okay. No more productivity module use for a bunch of processing for metals. Hmm. That sounds unfortunate, but it might make it convenient because we can just do it in space. Modules seem to have changed. Apparently, Holmium processing now requires stuff from other planets, Cryonite. And there are molten metals now. That sounds cool. Or hot, I guess. Added ingots for basic metals. Whole new... It's, it almost sounds like a whole new mod all over again. Move the logistics system research into space science. Wait. Wait, as in the original logistics system? Like this thing? You need space for this? No. That's doing... That's doing more of my main complaint with space exploration. Stop putting basic quality of life stuff behind way too much research. That, that, that's, that's rough. I do not approve. Oh, we actually still do have a tile here. Yeah, no, that's, that's not okay. Uh, let's remove that. Move all of this down one. It took way too long to get bots, to get spidertrons, to get big substations. To be fair, Rocket Silo is before yellow now. Hmm. We'll see. And then... Like this. Let's 
some undergrounds. Whoops. Cool. And then flip this around. And we may as well use some underground belts here. Love the 20-ish UPS. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Milk and pesto. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. On the other hand, imagine the joy when you find an old ruin or hidden cache that contains a treasure of one or two requested chests. Oh no. Alright, that should probably be fine. I'm surprised we're short exactly one recycling facility. I'm thinking it's... Whoop, I'm thinking it's probably in some trash slots somewhere. Yep. Okay, uh, let's get rid of all of this, and you know what, just, just, just remove all of this, it's just gonna make things more confusing. I'm not worried about a little bit of 25 degree thermofluid. Pick this up manually. Um, we may use more efficiency modules here, we'll see. Then again, no, we'll probably just go full speed. Oh, my inventory's full. There we go. We'll probably just go full speed, as much as it uses 320 megawatts each. Three of these is a gigawatt. But three of these... Uh, gives us 12.6 blank data cards per second. That's actually huge. This is our old um, blank data card build. The entire block gives us 40, 40, 41 per second. So to be able to get, uh, let's see, 10 of these would give us the same if we're processing a belt of junk data card. Yeah, that's actually kind of huge. Um, so what? How, how much can we support here? Forty-three point one five broken data cards. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oh. Okay, so as many as we can fit. Actually, I think I also. I think it's actually more than that. No? Wait, what? 40 broken data cards per second. That's like 180. Yeah, literally as many of these as we can fit, and that would be 760. Blank data cards per second. Okay, we probably don't need this many uh, recycling facilities. So why don't we just lay out as many of these as we please and see what the um, see what it looks like. That is covered. Wait, what? Oh. Okay. Nav set. 
Piccadillys. Uh, this is still a problem. There we go. Easy. Okay, so we can have rows of eight. Input fluid in the middle, perhaps. That's going to be a little bit of a problem here, I think. You can no longer make scaffolding on a planet. Yep, I saw that. Basically, I guess you go into space, use your very limited original space there to make space scaffolding. I like that you make it where you need it, but having to get all the stuff in orbit is going to be a bit rougher. Yeah, it's going to be a lot less stack efficient. Um, Alright, so if we really want to go ham here... Uh, it's going to look like this. I just want to build, like, the last block for this that we'll ever need, and then we'll just trim it down t to use what we actually have for now. We definitely can't fit another one out here, so we may as well... Stretch this out a little bit. And because the bots are going to kidnap our... Because the spiders are going to kidnap our um, deep supercomputers. I'll keep a robo network here. Um, so let's see, we're looking at 64, which ones are real? None of them. Wait, where, where are my, where are my deep supercomputers? Give them back. Uh, am I not requesting them? I'm not requesting them. Okay. Alright, so 64 of these would actually only give us 14 broken data cards per second. 14.22, sorry, to be precise. Uh, that would only require 12 of these machines. And that would give us less than two belts of scrap. Okay. That makes it a lot easier. Uh, let's go with those 12 there. I might just move them around a bit. Well, we'll figure out where we're going to put them after we lay this out. How much fluid would a row of these use? Hardly any. And cryonite is actually most of one belt. Wow. But just eight of these. Uh, That would mean we need eight belts of cryonite rod. Almost. Well, 30... Uh, what is it? 64. 256. Uh, we would need six belts. Um, just to support the cryonite rods. I think we'll abandon the notion of designing this block as if we're going to make it massive, theoretically. We can get 
a couple of a couple of belts of cryonite up here. Oh, that's for land only. There we go. We could maybe just limit this whole thing to like 16. That would mean 3.55 broken data cards per second. We only need three of these machines. My how the turntables. Speed one needs solid fuel. Wait, what? Instead of red chips? Red one needs glass instead of red chips. Well, that's nice. So you don't need 600 million uh, circuits per second as much. All right. What if we just go for, what was it? 16? That is less than two belts of cryonite rod. Uh, 67 blank data cards per second. Yeah, I think this will be enough. It can process 71 junk data cards per second. That's close to what we had before. We built this when we had a million junk data cards that had piled up. And it was able to do 90 per second. And it's been silent a lot of the time. So I think this will be fine. Um, let's just move this out of the way for now. And I was thinking we could do kind of a horizontal thing this time. Got plenty of space. Um, so Cryonite. I guess that's not most convenient spot for it after all. Right about here is good actually. Let's say we do cryonite input like this. We need more cryonite than junk data card. No, other way around. No, it's the same. 4.5 per second each. I would kind of prefer... I would kind of prefer it if we could do stack inserter for both of them. Say, let's do filters just to illustrate. We could do Rhinite Rod. And then Junk Data Card. We accomplish this with some underground belts. Oh, we can't reach like that. It's fine. And then over here, uh, we do something like, oh, well, not like that. And the beacon is exactly in the way. Okay, let's swap them around. Um, so we're going to have... That's actually a problem. Uh, we can't get through here. 
Not unless we go to the trouble of making deep space belts. We're not doing that. Um, I could just increase the vertical space here. That's by far the simpler solution. Uh, so this is what, one, two tiles away? like so. Alright, can we flip this? Oh, we can because we didn't pick up the other things here. Like so. I used to have the um, sulfur and vulcanite for prod two, three, respectively. I think overall I'm unhappy with the module changes for right now. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm kind of both excited and concerned <laughs> about playing the next patch. All right, let's bring you down this way. Uh, we will be needing a splitter somewhere. I guess that's max distance. We could move that up a tile or two. One tile would look much better, actually, I think. Wait, no. Wait, yes. Oh, that's actually a super convenient spot to do this. Calculated. Fifteen seconds per module for tier one to two, twenty for tier three to four. Compared to what? Wait, what? Two seconds for one. Four seconds for two. Eight seconds for three. Are they making it way slower to make modules? Yikes. Oh wow. Five, it's already 512 seconds for the final step for speed module 9, for example. That is a lot. Although we can make them in space assembly machines. Okay. I think I like where this is going. Um, so we've got Cryonite coming in cold. Wait, what? And 
25 degree thermo output. Needs to go down there. With 16 of these, which isn't that unrealistic. Uh, we only get 3.55 broken data cards per second. We only need three of these machines. In fact, if we put them up here, we probably only need two. Just put it under the same beacon with speed. Three point five five five. Yeah, just two. Although it does spit out eighteen scrap per second, nine each. Um that's probably two inserters for each of these. Um yeah, that's probably fine. I don't think we need any special belt or anything uh, to make sure that works. Okay, so outputs. Blank data card. Wait, wait, wait. What's the rate of 16 of these for everything? Uh... 67 plus 3 plus 1 71 Hold on, what? Oh, it recycles cryonite rods? Oh, I should have paid more attention Alright, so the throughput for ne that we need for cryonite rods is actually way lower um, in fact, it's less than one belt for the 64 of these that I could have designed earlier. But we're still not going to do that. I'm, I think we'll have way more than enough here. Um, Alright, well, the easiest way to do the recycling is to direct swap the cryonite rods, but we can't really do that with the shape of things as they are now. Um, I would love to just sort of prioritize, uh, priority merge them in up here. What's our output from one of these machines? 4.2 plus a little bit plus 4. Uh, that's like two stack inserters. Hmm, we may need more vertical space here. In fact, I'm sure we will, if we want these to be close together, make the most of the beacon. So, let's just bring this down here somewhere. Never went over T5 for most things. Yeah, I stopped at tier 6. Tier 6 is a lot. Very slow to get them into everything. Maybe I could have stopped at tier 5. What's the difference? 12% versus 14%. And it's like more than three times the cost. Okay, so let's say we do eight of these is more than two belts. I mean, more than one belt. Hmm. This is surprisingly difficult to design. I thought it would be, like, something we could do quickly while we wait for some stuff. We've still got products finished zero over here, but we are making its prerequisite. I think it's been spirited away to uh, to make more catalogs, though. 
It's over here, tier 2. How much are we requesting for each of these? Two train loads. Um, maybe we could be a little more reserved about that. So it'll deliver again once we're down to a thousand. One thing that makes sense is just to put them in the machines at the mall. In which ones? All right, if we're getting one belt out of each half of these, then I guess we can do this. Thirty per second out of those two. So about fifteen, sixteen on each side. Yeah, that should be fine. And then we need to filter them. So it's just blank junk and right night rod. How many cryonite rods come from each side? 32. Okay. And they should be evenly on each side of the belt. And if we just... merge it in here... be fine. Or oh, I think the other one will go there, actually. This will automatically be prioritized over what's coming out of these chests, because whenever we detect something on this belt, we don't swing these inserters. So that goes there. Maybe this one could be around. And this goes here. And then what about the other resources? We get two belts of blank and a little bit of broken data cards. So we should keep these on two separate belts for now. Uh, and we'll just use this to filter off the broken. Whoops. Or maybe it would be easier to put them in the middle. We put them in the middle. do something like that, especially considering we've got so little moving through there. just one belt scrap go down here. I'm 
I'm being a lot more... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just kind of throwing this together compared to most of my builds, because... This will be overkill anyway. And we want to move on to other things. Hey yo, Ian Noah. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. That goes there. Uh, we can do some undergrounds to tidy this up. A little bit. It's not going to line up well, is it? Oh, it does. It's perfect, actually. Fantastic. And then... The grounds go burr. Night is looking a bit off. We can switch this on now. Negative 273 degree thermofluid. And junk data card is already correct. And then we need output for the 25 degree thermofluid. Which is pretty straightforward. Let's see where this squeezes through. Right about here. How about this? Perfect. Uh, that's less perfect. But it'll work. Just barely, actually. doesn't connect because it's a 15. And can we reach? We cannot reach. Okay. The station is active, right? Yeah, we're good. And so is this one. All right, we got junk data cards on the way. We can see this tested immediately. Uh, cryonite rods as well, please. And stack threshold 160. Oh, and I forgot to name this to take cryonite rods as well. No. Cryonite rod, negative 273, requester, we got it done before a train is coming, fantastic. Is the, is this UPS optimization? Uh, kinda, technically. We're not gonna get that far with UPS optimization. It would take so long, I may as well start a new playthrough. Uh, but yeah, we've got junk data cards on the way. We've got cryonite on the right on the way. We need negative two seventy three degree thermofluid. Right. Oh, what's our train limit? There we go. Do we need to crank up the priority to make this happen. Uh, I 
think we do at this point. Priority a gajillion. Would probably have to remake everything to optimize it for UPS. Yeah, by the time you realize there's a problem, it's kind of already too late. I do kind of want to see this working before we move on. Uh, and I would really like to see time space anomaly data delivered to that block, but. But we need a lot more Nequitite, as always. It's not enough to have four blocks continually processing it to get a decent flow. Why is this one... Okay, I think it just got started again. No? What? What is with this input? Oh, the output is full. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's totally fine. How has our ingot production been? There's been a little dip, but it's been quite consistent over the last half hour. And that despite the fact that this game is kind of ridiculously well optimized. Yeah, I mean, consider just how many things are happening simultaneously. It's actually kind of mind-blowing. If you... It's like... It's almost like trying to comprehend the scale of space. Basically, you're redoing everything and have to replan everything for point six. Yeah, that too. To be fair, you could probably have his production running at like 40 UPS if it was designed from the ground up for that scale yeah definitely dark rail welcome welcome hope you're doing well yeah if I'd known just how bad it would get even after upgrading my RAM uh, from the beginning we definitely would have built things a bit differently I probably would have gone for the AAI giant containers and uh, loaders. Um, we would need a whole lot fewer inserters, uh, circuitry for balancing these things. Um, we could use those giant things I've seen, I think, Dune using. That's like one entity per cargo wagon to take this stuff out. Uh, there's a lot we could have done differently. All right, so we've got everything except for... We've got the junk data cards. Uh, we've got everything except for the thermo fluid. Super cool thermo fluid. 180k. Super high priority. Um, we should be getting it just as... It... Oh, we're missing some modules here. Uh, that'll help a little bit. More than a little bit, perhaps. Let's get our spiders to finish the job down here. AI itself is apparently extremely bad. The AI vehicles, yes, but there's a bunch of other stuff that AI offers as well, like giant containers. So we don't need to have, you know, six or twelve chests per cargo wagon if we want to go fast and yes it is actually terrible um, for UPS uh, last time I tried playing with it we found that just having AI vehicles sitting idle cost a lot of UPS um, I went I ended up with like I don't know more than a hundred um, and I went through and just switched off the AI for all of them. Which, unfortunately, there's no way to automate. Um, if we could turn them on and off under certain circumstances, that might make a really big difference. But literally just 
pressing the red button and turning the AI off for vehicles one by one, going through like a hundred or more of them, uh, we could watch the UPS climb back up. Which is unfortunate, because uh, I really quite enjoyed... I've done some of it off-stream. Uh, I really quite enjoyed programming the vehicles and everything. So why is this not... We don't have enough cryonite slush. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't think we would actually run out of cryonite slush. That never crossed my mind. Oh no, we're about to we're we're about to have another crisis for antimatter. Um, so we're getting crinite slush from barrels. What? What? Why do we have empty? What? Oh. Wait, what? How do we deal with the empty barrels here? We unload everything except for crinite slush barrel. But this belt is backed up. Okay, you know what? I think instead of fixing this, um, it would probably be better just to get a new ship that's going to deliver Brynet Slush. Uh, let's get our spaceship builder over here. We are making cryonite slush somewhere. Here it is. Except we're putting it straight into barrels. So let's get our construction spiders up here. We're probably all. We're also making cryonite slush here, but we're pumping it directly into these machines. Um, trying to borrow that would be a bit of a problem. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to borrow this cryonite slush. We're just going to add a train station right about here. Pickup station. One, two, three, four, five, six should be there. And... Some pipe. That's actually a really good fit. So how fast is this? Uh, 101 crinite slush per second. I get the feeling that's not going to be enough. If we actually wanted all four of these to go full speed. Oh. <laughs> um. We need 2.3k per second. Um, I, I don't think we're actually going to need that, uh, need it to go that fast overall. Um, but yeah, this is a bit of a problem right now. Oh, we've got our thermo fluid on the way. Let's just bring what we've got. Cryosis, indeed. Mazzle Fazzle, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If you want to know how bad AAI vehicles can get, just watch the latest Dosh Doshington video. I see. Uh, let's see. We will hijack the Crynite slush build that we've got here already. Since it's already here. Uh, and I can give it better modules as well. And we could maybe just double it, since we've got a train station for input. This is actually barely using any cryonite rods. 
Um, well, we'll see what it looks like after the modules. But I'll probably just double this where we are. Hmm. Can I not double it? Maybe if we move the station... Sure, where we're gonna put the train station in that case. Uh, I guess we can put this train stop on the other side. Yeah, 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 this is good. That's totally fine. I could tell the spiders arrived because we got those little pauses. Actually, leave those. Alright, so we're looking at a whopping 12 coronite rod per second, and only 163 slush per second coming out of it, unfortunate. But it's a start. I do wish trains, uh, cargo wagons didn't have this unfortunate gap with the way it lines up with the fluid containers. Alright, we're not, we don't have a high enough throughput to worry about. Pumps or anything. We have no sulfuric acid here. And what about the consumption of fluids? It's actually really slow as well. So we don't have to worry about the shape of it. Uh, and then, last but not least, we need some... Bryonite down here. Fantastic. Now that we've got at least a source of crinite directly to the rail network, we can add a tanker shuttle. He basically created LTN but with AAI and a humongous amount of combinators. Fun. Oh, we haven't got the floor yet. Feels weird. Putting down the uh, tanks first. Good grief. I really wish blueprints included priorities. And that you didn't have to wait for a floor to be placed. Both of those things, really. Uh, we need to make another trip to make this happen. Okay, I see how it is. It's not like it's going to launch anytime soon, actually. Oh, and of course...
let LTN know what we've got here. Uh, standard pickup station for starters. Chronate slush provider. And we don't need a provide stack threshold. Cool. That's something at least. 163 per second. Uh, that would support, let's see, about, uh, about 750, 800, uh, negative 273 degree thermo fluid per second. It's a start. Oh, did we get any of these recipes done? Products finished zero. Wait. Oh, I haven't actually linked this yet. Because it doesn't line up properly anymore. Whoops. Uh, I made that a little bit awkward, actually. What if... Hypothetically... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Please don't tell me. Okay, cool. Delete that. And is this seven? Perfect. And then we need uh, this to connect up here as well. I think would probably be the easiest way to make this work. We're one off whether we use a nine or an underground. Bruh. Okay. I love this animation. It's so cool. The deep supercomputers. And they're... Already, the rate that we're getting blank data cards from junk is actually kind of fast. I forgot to put a splitter here. We've got a balanced loader anyway. Fluid is not a problem. Fantastic. All right. Glad that's working. Let's have another look. I actually need another place uh, to bring cryonite. I guess we'll build it right about here. That makes the most sense. here. Okay. We're going to need a blueprint for uh, the tanker shuttle drop-off. Oh, we don't actually want to fill this with uh, scaffolding. Um, you know what? Just mark this for deconstruction. That's weird. Oh, I think I see what happened there. Okay. Uh, did we happen to line it up so that... No, we need to remove a bunch of these. Let's just remove all of that. And... We 
should now be able to put down our blueprint for the tanker shuttles to come in, I think. Oh, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Get out of there. I hope we didn't just lose some spiders. I don't think it would show it as a kill. Um, it doesn't show it as a kill if we lost them. Uh, even... Even if we were replacing the scaffolding immediately, if we delete it while there's a spider on top of it, it's Rip Spider. I'm not sure why there's still scaffolding missing over here from the blueprint. Okay. Yeah, we need to be a bit more careful about that. Hopefully you don't lose that blueprint book for when you play SE next time. I mean, there's a lot that I'm going to have to redesign anyway. That's pretty neat. Irondale has some pretty impressive models in SE. Yes, indeed. What's neat? Double that spider? Wait, what? I don't think scaffold can be taken out from underneath spiders. It can, and it's killed our spiders before. If, it, if it's removed when there's a spider leg on it, the spider just disappears. At least if you walk spiders over scaffold marked for deconstruction, it unmarks those tiles. The spider's feet cross. Uh, nope. Nope, we've definitely lost spiders to that before. But yeah, no, um, I'm sure there's a few things I'd want to keep from my blueprint books. But it would also be a great opportunity to do things, you know, improve things in hindsight. So many signals. Excuse me, I got my mute wrong. I think your map forgot what UPS is. Yes, indeed. Glacier Wolf, Zavoxifol, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, if this schedules like six trains to deliver junk data cards right now, uh, then we know we need to speed it up a bit, probably. Let's go get some more supercomputers. They only cost a million Naquium, it's fine. 42 Naquium processors. Jeez. Then up here. Do it doing okay you? Yeah, not too bad. Uncomfortably cold, but won't last forever.
Hello, Hume. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What's this bot doing? Oh, it's part of the... Oh, the mall stretches all the way down here. Okay. Right then. Maybe I should stick to one click movement. Give to me. Oh, they are giving to me all of the supercomputers. Bots sure like to oversupply things these days. Alright. Let's build some more. Uh, where are they? Here it is. We're missing... Uh, let's see. We're missing ten supercomputers. It's not going to take that much. Kind of. I mean, it is pretty expensive, but... We can build this and never think about it again. Ed Zackley. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. Uh, we've actually got... Do we have our spaceship floor? Why, why is it not building? We've got 900 spaceship floor in this spider. So what's happening here? Uh, what if I... What if I turn it off and on? I can only guess that some other robo-network has reserved the job. Oh my goodness. Um, well then. Wait. Why? Why does this robot... Wait, what? Why does this robot network have spaceship floor in it? It doesn't have spaceship floor in it. That must be... That must be all of the spaceship floor that was in this network. But it should have got thrown in the trash and brought back to the mall. Uh... Or are these the bots that belong to this spider? Yeah... Okay, um, let's try remove and replace. I think that's the last of it. And we finally have our ship. Nice. All right, so we are going to request slush. And name it slush requester. It's going to be pumped in here. Fantastic. And then we need some logic. What is this? Uh. I think this was a ship that I meant to make, and I never got around to using it. Uh, what's something that goes upstairs? Liquid rocket fuel. Let's copy that. And we're going to say slush has to be greater than or equal to this much in this tank before we send the launch signal and destination to the console. We also have to come up with an arbitrary ID for this. Ed Zackley, thank you for the follow. 
welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see. If we look up Cryonite Slush, that is... Fluid ID 31. I'm pretty sure 31 is taken. I could do negative 31. Or I could just add to the numbers that we've got here. 3005 was the last thing we added, antimatter stream. So I guess we'll just use 3006. Hope that's not taken somewhere. Uh, and now we need to set up the receiver. We also need to finish this block. There we go. When Crynite slush less than 10, go back to Nalvis. Uh, what were we at? 3006? Oh wait, I can shift click. There we go. Uh, what? Okay, 3006 was definitely taken. Uh, what? Did... Oh no. Um... I think this is petroleum now. Let's grab that shuttle and send it back. Petroleum shuttle 2. Back to Nalvis orbit before you land and have to waste a whole lot of liquid rocket fuel. Uh... Alright, let's check all of these. This is 3005, 3006, 3007, 3008, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So surely 3009 uh, isn't taken. Right? Also, we're out of clamps. It's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, I don't want to bother to change the settings for that one. Uh, Cryonite slush less than 10. Go back home. 3009. Can I, like, copy-paste that to give it the settings? No. Yes. Okay, 3009. And clamp 3009 to 3009. Okay, and this is Bryonite Slush. Uh, tanker one. Why have we got no Cryonite slush here still? Because we don't have anything near a train load yet. Alright, we need to do a proper block for Cryonite slush. We'll probably do that here. In fact, that seems like the obvious choice. Uh, but for now, it's time to find someone to rate. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, mods are here. You couldn't place the walls down because it was missing the floor. Yes. Because the, uh, the bots were chasing the spider from a long time ago. Uh, Diablo. It's been a while, I think. Bake John. Who else we got? Tumbling. We've raided quite a bit. Uh, we've raided Diablo a number of times. Let's let's go for Fake John today. Q 
Can we raid? We can. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you like. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And uh, in the meantime, stay safe. Have a good day. Take care, In. Thanks for hanging out.